The United Nations General Assembly in New York City spent the day painting a rosy picture around the autocratic nightmare known as Agenda 2030. In this great hall, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development was adopted. With its 17 Sustainable Development Goals, the agenda is hugely ambitious. Imbued with a universal and transformative spirit, the agenda sets out as a master plan for us to transform our world to one in which extreme poverty has been eliminated and peaceful, well-governed societies live sustainably and in harmony with our environment. During the 71st session, I am committed to a universal push for implementation of all 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And then President Obama stepped up to the New World Order podium for his final love fest of himself as the President of the United States. As if speaking into the vacuum of space, Obama lectured the international body of globalist banking pawns with half-truths and grandiose ideas, still promising big things after eight years of diligently checking off the multinational corporation's to-do list at the expense of any real hope or change benefiting the citizens of the United States. We have made international institutions like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund more representative while establishing a framework to protect our planet from the ravages of climate change. We see too many governments muzzling journalists and quashing dissent and censoring the flow of information. In medicine and in manufacturing and education and communications, we're experiencing a transformation of how human beings live on a scale that recalls the revolutions in agriculture. The existing path to global integration requires a course correction. And as these real problems have been neglected, Alternative visions of the world have pressed forward, both in the wealthiest countries and in the poorest. Religious fundamentalism, the politics of ethnicity or tribe or sect, aggressive nationalism, a crude populism, sometimes from the far left, but more often from the far right, which seeks to restore what they believe was a better, simpler age, free of outside contamination. These are the policies that I've pursued here in the United States and with clear results. American businesses have created now 15 million new jobs. After the recession, the top 1% of Americans were capturing more than 90% of income growth, but today that's down to about half. Last year, poverty in this country fell at the fastest rate in nearly 50 years. A society that asks less of oligarchs than ordinary citizens will rot from within. That's why we've pushed for transparency and cooperation in rooting out corruption and tracking illicit dollars. Because markets create more jobs when they're fueled by hard work and not the capacity to extort a bribe. That's why we've worked to reach trade agreements that raise labor standards and raise environmental standards as we've done with the Trans-Pacific Partnership, so that the benefits are more broadly shared. Meanwhile, just outside the doors of the United Nations building in Manhattan, the true impact of Obama's policies basked in stark reality, as the number of black food stamp recipients has risen 58.2% under Obama, a stagnant GDP growth of 2.4% in 2015 froze any economic growth, and the national debt ticked away incessantly, as it essentially doubled under Obama's spending spree on global initiatives and the prerogatives of of other nations. And while more possible radical jihadist terrorists pour into small cities across the United States, like Missoula, Montana, and Charleston, West Virginia, billionaire Obama and Hillary Clinton supporter George Soros adds more insult to injury by announcing a donation of $500 million to keep the destabilization of civilization on an even keel. CNBC reported, the 86-year-old George Soros said in an official statement, we will invest in startups, established companies, social impact initiatives, and businesses started by migrants and refugees. Will the unemployed coal miners be working for the refugees now? John Bound for Infowars.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Wednesday, the 21st day of September 2016. We're going to come back and talk about the biggest debate in history set for next Monday. Ladies and gentlemen, my plate is absolutely, completely uh, full of over-the-top information. Obama did his last official U.N. speech as president. 
calling for a liberal world order. Yes, the world government's now liberal, so you're racist uh, if you oppose mega corporations above the law uh, that tax and control your lives. Uh, more foundation news is coming out where you would just pay uh, Obama and Hillary and get ambassadorships uh, and other high-powered placements. Completely criminal. They should all be arrested. Uh, John Boehner is cashing out. He's uh, j j joining corporate lobbying firm that represents China. So you know why he won't go after Hillary or wouldn't go after Hillary for representing the communist Chinese uh, as the secretary of state. I mean, this treason is flagrant beyond flagrant. We're going to break all of that down. Uh, we're going to get into the latest uh, terror threats and terror cells in the country and the State Department admitting they know that they're bringing people in that are on terrorist watch lists. So we're spied on by the NSA to control the American people. But then when the father says my son's going to attack or when it's known people are visiting terrorist training camps or it's known that they are actual terrorists, they're left alone. This is open and shut. We have an illegitimate rogue criminal government. But before I go any further, because it ties in to $650 million pledged by globalist corporations in the U.S. alone, $500 million more by Soros this week, $100 million two weeks ago by the Ford Foundation to fund open borders, to fund collapsing economies, and to fund focusing the revolution that's coming on local government and police to ensure the further breakdown of society than the globalists come in and mop things up. I want to air, air another powerful report John Bowne has done that ties into this. The United Nations refugee agenda strikes the USA. And then we come back, Obama said, quote, submit to world government. Oh, Americans don't understand international norms. I'm so sorry, but we're going to have to accept them. You mean what globalists impose on third world countries? That's now the norm here? You mean Chinese-style censorship? That's now the norm here? They are dropping the hammer. All these articles and videos are up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, and it's all coming up today. Also, remember a few months ago, our reporters were in New York City, and a man got beaten up for just politely talking to Black Lives Matter, saying, what are you going to do when ISIS comes and strikes New York? Headline, Infowars.com. Man who was beaten up for warning of ISIS attacks in New York by BLM. Proven right. We're going to play that as well. And then the big news. Just a gut level told me, because I knew they were going to, quote, have the feed hosted by a major university in New York. And so you could have every media outlet from InfoWars to you name it carry the feed. We won't just be analyzing it and talking over this debate. That's how we can legally, uh, you know, uh, carry uh, debates that have been hijacked by the mainstream media. I don't believe they should be able to do that. I believe it should be feeds available to all media, just like they're now doing. So so, so this debate is 90 minutes. Coming up, 8 o'clock Central, we'll have an hour of live coverage before, and then we're going to carry the feed live with limited comments during clapping or breaks by yours truly. But we're going to have our crew in live time fact-checking and grabbing snippets and analyzing and putting clips out while the hour and a half debate goes on, then we'll have an hour and a half of live post-debate analysis and your phone calls. So we're going to do a big one, two, three, four, four-hour transmission next Monday, Infowars.com forward slash show for the free feeds. Radio affiliates are going to be picking it up. A lot of our TV affiliates are also picking it up. Uh, this is very, very exciting to be able to counter the establishment media in live time. But because this is just going to be monitored uh, and, and, and uh, basically refereed by uh, Lester Holt, who I think will do a pretty good job. He's got a pretty good record of, uh, at least when he hosts debates and things, uh, you know, not throwing too many curveballs. We'll see what happens, though. Uh, Lester Holt is the one that's basically moderating, but he's not the one hosting it. It's a New York University. So we're going to actually be carrying... Uh, the debate, uh, not just uh, giving commentary on it next Monday. But listen, my gut tells me there's a very good chance. I'd say 50-50. I don't want to stick my neck out, but I think Hillary's going to find a way to cancel. Or she's going to have a coughing fit and maybe even collapse. I, I don't like to get metaphysical, but months ago, before she fell down in New York, I was having dreams where she was at a debate with Trump and falls over. Now, now I'm not saying that's going to happen, 
obviously most of what you dream of, you know, isn't, you know, prescient. But I'm telling you, I wonder if Vegas has opened up a betting line on whether she's going to make it A or B collapse during it. All right, let's go to this John Bound report. Indulge me for a moment. What if one of your relatives, spouse, child, or even you innocently absorbed the shrapnel from one of the bombs detonated in Manhattan on Saturday night? Or had just taken a knife wound in a mall in St. Cloud, Minnesota? Who would you hold accountable? The radicalized Black Lives Matter supporting Afghanistan-born suspect Ahmed Khan Rahami? Or the Kenyan-born Dahir Adan, a knife-wielding radical psychopath we are supposed to accept as a lone wolf? Or is it Donald Trump because he is the only one cutting through the progressive BS, a display of honesty? The PC culture has zero ability to accept after years of brainwashing to their own peril. And I'll have more to say about it when we actually know some facts. For I must tell you that just before I got off the plane, a bomb went off in New York and nobody knows exactly what's going on. But boy, we are living in a time we better get very tough, folks. We better get very, very tough. Or are the true culprits sitting comfortably with no fear of persecution? Many of them equally as untouchable as Hillary Clinton, smugly pushing the narrative of the crisis and normalization of the jihadist invasion of these United States in the halls of the United Nations in New York City right now. It fills what has been a perennial gap in the international protection system that of truly sharing responsibility for refugees in the spirit of the United Nations Charter. But hey, whoops, the AP reports the U.S. government has mistakenly granted citizenship to at least 858 immigrants from countries of concern to national security or with high rates of immigration fraud who had pending deportation orders, according to an internal Homeland Security audit released on Monday. The Washington Examiner reports nearly 20% of the 4,600 Syrian refugees already brought to the United States were settled in the New York, New Jersey area, the site of the weekend bombings that reportedly could be a dry run of future terror attacks. CNS News reported almost 100,000 Somali refugees have been resettled in the United States since 9-11, including 8,619 so far during the current fiscal year. The largest number, some 16% of the total over the past 15 years, have been resettled in Minnesota, home to the nation's biggest Somali-American community. Of the 97,046 Somali refugees admitted to the U.S. since the fall of 2001, 99.6% were Muslim and 28,836, 29.7% were males between the ages of 14 and 50. Under Hillary Clinton's watch as Secretary of State, roughly 700,000 Muslim immigrants were brought in. A very conservative estimation claims that 10 to 20 percent of those are radicalized. And Obama still wants to keep bringing them in. That's his answer to 29 innocent Americans being shredded by shrapnel in Manhattan. Meanwhile, London stand Mayor Sadiq Khan is throwing the first ball at the Mets game as if all is going according to the globalist plan. We are under total attack by a destabilization agenda of Western culture, blinded by our own tolerance of a supposed religion of peace, actually in the process of a total jihad that has been in effect in one way, shape, or form for over 1,400 years. Our government didn't seem to have a problem killing a supposed radicalized religious cult in Waco. What makes the dormant terror cells across the United States any different? Are American citizens supposed to sit on their hands while fellow citizens are blown up on U.S. soil and casually reported in the news cycle? Knowing full well that what has become the normalized terror in the Mideast is now going to be a day-to-day -day occurrence here in the United States. While the United Nations sets up a strong cities network intended to enforce the United Nations Small Arms Treaty, our Constitution grants U.S. citizens the dividing powers between the central and state governments, the branches of government, a system of checks and balances, and equal representation of the states. President Obama has routinely violated that power, routinely supported by George Soros and the United Nations. With these latest attacks, there can be little doubt now a traitor occupies the White House.
and another trader intends on moving in. John Bound for Infowars.com. You know, I don't want to just sit here and, and, and say George Soros is behind everything, but he is really one of the top generals trying to bring down Western civilization and promote evil. I mean, if you ask what side is Soros on, it's always the side of evil. This guy is the basis of modern James Bond villains. That's admitted. That's how bad he is. But they believe their crimes are so great and connected to so many politicians in different countries that they're too big to fail. They're such big gangsters, they believe they're invincible. Now, when we come back, Barack Obama pushing world government, basically putting down the United States like we're a bunch of idiot country bumpkins and that we're not conforming to international standards when it's the American robber barons that set up the UN program with their European counterparts. It's all coming up. Plus, rioters attack truck drivers, loot Walmart after black man shot dead by black cop. Um, we don't know the details of this yet, but we do know the Tulsa shooting of an innocent black man who was just there with his stalled vehicle is very, very sad, but it's not the basis for a civil war. The State Department has come out and admitted that there are terrorists coming in with the refugees. I was watching Fox News this morning, the supposed conservative uh, alternative, fair and balanced, and five days after the terror attack, last Saturday or terror attacks, they were still saying, is it terror? Is it lone wolf? Can we call it terror? And they had FBI and other counterterrorism experts on TV talking to people like they were three years old. And I said to myself, is this the twilight zone? They are deliberately dumbing information down. The message is the medium. And then you tune to CNN or MSNBC, it's even crazier. And now Hillary's trying to be Donald Trump with her big, you know, airplane behind her when she gives her little speeches. And uh, suddenly, you know, she wants to have strong vetting and background checks of people coming in. She's becoming Donald Trump with how many days left to this most historic of elections? 40, 47 edge of your seat days and you talk about edge of your seat i was calm when i got up here this morning and when i went over the news and i looked at the information i was hyperventilating the energy level was so high and sweating and i'm not somebody that's ever sweated in front of a crowd or going on air unless it's hot and it's not even hot and i was talking to the crew today i said why do you think i'm suddenly breaking out in a sweat, and they said, it's the energy. Everybody can feel it. Other people I know said, we're breaking out in sweats just listening to this stuff. It is crazy. I mean, we've got Obama going before the UN. We played part of it earlier. We're going to play more of it here in a moment. Just, yeah, you know, Americans just understand international standards. I'm trying to get them to do it. Like, it's just reasonable to have open borders and turn your guns in and have 80% tax rates and blah, blah, blah. This is the guy that became the head of the U.N. for a period of time, the first time ever, violating Article 1, Section 9, when he became the head of the Security Council. Remember that? Rubbing our noses in it. So I want to talk about this, and when we come back, I want to get into the mega debate. The biggest debate in history, they're saying 100 million. I, I had guesstimated a few weeks ago that it'd be as big as a playoff game, 70 million. Super Bowls are 80 to 90 million, 100 million. The, 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 the biggest TV show in history was MASH. The 1983 finale got 100 million mark. They're saying this is going to surpass that. And the good news is everybody can carry it. You, I can go pay a service, get a feed, and carry the thing with InfoWars logo on it. We're going to be doing that, but also analyzing the media, what they're up to. Uh, but that's coming up this Monday from 7. It kicks off at 8. But 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Central is when the debate starts. 90 minutes. When we come back, we're going to discuss this, and I'm going to open the phones up, too. Do you think Hillary, who can't even stand up for 10 minutes, who has coughing fits constantly, who's falling down, the Secret Service told us every hour. And I said, well, specifically, and they said, look, sometimes every 15, 20 minutes. She's so drugged up, though, to suppress the seizures that she's not as sick then. But then to be able to look like she's not drugged out of her mind 
and totally bedraggled and 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 uh, somewhat focused so she can hornswoggle uh, the public, they've got to take her off the depressants. That's what you give people to stop seizures is different spectrums of depressants. My dad's brother, groggy, slow, when he's on the depressants, just as smart as I am or my dad is when he's off the depressants, he now has a brain chip. That's how they treat this. They don't just have nerve stimulators. They also have brain chips, and he's got a brain chip, and it's, it's amazing. He is normal now, but then all of a sudden he'll go, well, I tell you, it's a very nice, it was a very nice day today. It sounds like a machine. It is wild. And then that goes for about 30 seconds. He goes, oh, it was stabilizing me. I'm, I'm, I'm okay now. I mean, that's the 21st century, folks, where someone in my family has a brain chip. And the point I'm getting at is I know about epilepsy. I know about head injuries. You know about them. Most people have been touched by head injuries or genetic epilepsy or uh, chemically caused epilepsy. And so we know Hillary Clinton's got serious brain problems. She's degenerating quickly, and I've already digressed. So I'll come back, get into Obama and the world government garbage at the U.N., rubbing our noses in it, and then we'll get into the debate. I'm going to open the phones up for longtime callers, first-time callers, who specifically want to talk about the debate. I want to hear from you. Do you think Hillary will make it to the debate? And then if she does... Will she have a coughing fit? I think that's a foregone conclusion. She gave a 10-minute speech earlier this week, had to quit, and then had to cancel all her other events until next Monday. So she's resting, sleeping beauty, the sleeping, sleeping Medusa down in her crypt, getting ready for next Monday. Will she have a coughing fit? Guaranteed. Will she collapse? Probably. On the march. I don't think she'll make the it. Empire. I don't think she'll make it. What do you think? So, I'm not a gambling man. I'm not saying I haven't played poker a few times in my life and put some money on it back in college or whatever, but I wonder if Vegas has already opened up a line. Or I wonder if London has opened up a line. They'll take a bet on anything, I know that. I'd almost want to open up a bet just as almost like a, a crowdsourced uh, poll. Open up a, a, a line to see... How many people think Hillary is going to, uh, A, show up for the debate, and they can also have bets on how many times she'll cough uh, during the uh, debate, and then C, will she collapse during the debate, or will she have to take a break and then come out 10 minutes late from the bathroom like she did last time? Because our sources say she's having epileptic seizures every 15, 20 minutes when she goes off the drugs. And how does the Secret Service know she's on drugs? When her hair is all sticking up and she looks like she just woke up from a 100-year nap. And she clearly looks like somebody on depressants. She looks like the two members of my family that I have known that had epilepsy. When they're coming off a big epileptic seizure and bit half their tongue off, the doctor says, double down on your medication, and they can hardly talk. Well, that's how the... Bedraggled. I mean, Hillary looks wrinkled, hair all sticking out. She looks like a bag lady. And I'm not being mean on how she looks. She does not look presidential. She does not look like Margaret Thatcher. She does not look like the head of the IMF, Legrand, who's an evil lady, but, you know, looks good. Nice hair, dress nice. Imagine if Obama started coming out with wrinkled suits and his hair sticking out and his eyes all looking wild and he started falling down. I mean, because he's a man, they'd eat his lunch. Doesn't matter what color he is. People wouldn't put up with it. But because it's a woman, it's supposedly okay. I mean, there's so many angles to this. So I want to hear from you. I'm going to take a lot of calls on this subject, so you don't have to hold long. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Will Hillary make it to the debate? Will she? That's a whole other area of discussion. What excuse will she have? A big false flag attack in New York? Notice the first debate was set to be in New York, and now there's been terror attacks and terror cells. Okay, uh, I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm just trying to war game this. Uh, will, will a new war start? I mean, who knows what they'll pull? Because she's got the president. 
her, her crime syndicate that she represents, the next row of shark teeth to come into office, they'll do anything. Roger Stone, the article's up on Infowars.com, says the Democrats are in total panic mode, more dangerous than they've ever been. And I absolutely concur with him. So will she make it? If she doesn't make it, what's the excuse? We may be about to see her admit, you know what, the wild card is she can tell the truth and say, you know what, I really do have an illness. Uh, this is how she'd spin it. I didn't think it was as bad as it was. I thought it would get better. It hasn't. I have a brain tumor that's returning. And so I would like you to put me into office as the first woman, and I'll try to live a few years, maybe longer, but the prognosis isn't good. And then Mr. Kane and others will carry on because we know Trump's evil. She could get in on the sympathy vote. But it's not fake. She's sick. She looks like death warmed over. I'm wargaming this here, and you notice how many times we wargame something, it turns out to be right. Because our brains are just as good as theirs. Let's look at every angle. This is the $64 trillion question. Does she show up? If she doesn't, what does she pull to get out of it? Think about it. Wargaming. Every angle. And then, if she does show up, She's going to be heavily drugged, all frumpy, come out, look like she's asleep, try to open her eyes, and then just go through her talking points. What is that going to be like with Donald Trump, the golden toad? With, you know, 170 IQ and the street smarts of Godzilla. What's going to happen? It's going to be historical. It's going to be legendary. I'll never forget working in talk radio stations uh, here in Texas and seeing and people so excited for months before the Super Bowl and the, the playoffs. And, oh, the anticipation. Alex, we've got tickets. You know, you say you're not into football, but I come on, man. We got tickets. We're going on a plane this weekend. I mean, it's the playoffs, man. There's going to be some hot girls there. Come on, man. And I'm like, listen, I'm going to stay behind and hike on the green belt and take my girlfriend out. I'm, I'm just not into Man, something's wrong with you, dude. We got tickets. We're going to be at the Jamesons' table. The Jamesons is paying for the whole. I remember one time they're paying for our hotels. We're going to be at the Jamesons' table broadcasting. Come on with us. Hell, you can talk about politics while we're covered. It's going to be a party. Zero interest. I've got so much anticipation on this election, these debates. I work a good 14 hours a day. I go home at 4 or 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, do more work. Get up six in the morning. I got up at four thirty in the morning this morning. Did did research and just got more and more wound up until I got here about an hour before showtime. And I wanted to shoot a few videos and a, and a few promos and things. And I was bouncing off the walls. And I am even foregoing coffee in the morning now to try to stop this energy level I've got now. I've even stopped taking brain force. It it, it isn't stopping. I think I'm going to explode or something. I, I, I can't stand it, quite frankly. It's the energy level, though, and I know everybody else can feel it. <sighs> wow. So that's the other thing you can call in on, because we're, you know, we're doing not screen calls, but we're on topic here is what I'm saying. Screen calls with do you agree, do you disagree, blah, 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 and then you know, kick you off if you don't agree or whatever. No, if you disagree with me, I'd love to hear from you as well, but it's, but it's on topic. Will she show up? If she doesn't, what's the excuse? And will she make it without coughing? I, I give that 99% no way. And then, if she makes it on stage, will she fall out? I give it about a 40, 50% chance she's going to have to be helped and, and is going to have trouble standing. You know what? They're not going to risk this. I, I don't think she's going to make it. I don't think she's going to make it. I don't think she's going to make it. We should tweet that out and ask the uh, folks on Twitter, do you think Hillary will actually make this debate? And if she does, can't, will she make it through it? I mean, I would be nervous getting on the stage for 90 minutes in front of 100 million people with Donald Trump. Seasoned, seasoned media journalist, you know, would be obviously having some butterflies here. This isn't just your ordinary event. She's going to get on the stage with Donald Trump. <laughs> when the stress goes up, he only gets better. I've seen it with my own eyes in person. So, legendary, historic. Ultra epic, over the top important, don't want to miss it. 
edge of your seat doesn't even bring you one-tenth of the way there? I mean, how do I find in the semantical thesaurus lexicon of verbiage the proper colloquial twist on the nomenclature of hype when you can't hype something like this because it's already too important. So how big do you call this debate, or am I wrong? 800-259-9231. We have loaded phones. I want to play the world government clip, but first, we have... We normally, in the last few years, basically double our audience every year on visits to InfoWars.com. And, 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 and the web more and more is not about just your website. It's about your apps and your Facebook and your Twitter and all your other platforms. But all of our platforms together, we have been ba almost almost doubling the audience on the Internet every year. On, on terrestrial talk radio, it grows a little because we get some bigger stations, but it never gets above 200 stations. But, but it's, 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 you know, it's grown quite a bit, but maybe 20, 30 percent a year. Which is good. It shows people are waking up. Look at the Trump phenomenon. Look at nationalism in Russia, nationalism in the UK, uh, in jolly old uh, England. We're all riding a wave of awakening. This is very exciting. And obviously Infowars.com and DrudgeReport.com and WorldNetDaily.com and others have been right at the heart of that, Ron Paul and others, from the beginning. You, the listeners of the show, are Americana. You are the global 1776 resistance. I don't care where you are, whether you're in Africa or Latin America or Asia or Europe. or I salute you. I'm humbled. To be here, I, 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 I try to do the best job I can, but, but I love you and I appreciate you. The problem is the, the world economy is so bad that as our audience goes straight up, until about six, seven years ago, as audience went up, revenue went up. And then it was about five, six, seven years ago, audience was going up, but revenue wasn't. I just had to get better at raising it and more into marketing, something I never really focused on. I would just do the minimum to get the money in and then stop. God, the amount of money I blew not at plugging years ago. When people had money, I would could have put it and saved it, built stuff. and uh, But look, it's all in God's plan. The point is, is that the audience is now not going up by 90% a year this year, probably because of the election, obviously, but other factors. 300% internet increase? 300%? Yeah. 300%. 100% of that's Drudge linking to us more. We're very thankful to Matt Drudge. And, but... He knows we're all in this together. I mean, if we don't fix this, we're all screwed. We're all bailing water. He goes, hey, don't thank me. Bail, bail, bail. Get the land. I mean, I get it. But we need financial support. That's the area where audience goes straight up. A little bit extra revenue comes in. I hire a few people. I do this. I do that. But it's just not there. It, it's, I mean, right now, especially the last month, um, we've not been bringing in the money we even need to operate at this level. Now, I'm like a squirrel. I've put nuts away. But I can see into the future we need to raise more money. So listen, we've got the very best products, things you need, nutraceuticals, gravity-fed water filtration systems, systems for your shower heads, non-GMO heirloom, open pollinated seeds, incredible uh, supplements, uh, nutraceuticals at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site. We have amazing Hillary for Prison shirts. Uh, we've got 20% off the highest quality methylcobalamin, organic, absorbable vitamin B12 that you take under the tongue. It's a liquid. The best from our research you're going to find. That's 20% off. It's the new special. Uh, but they came into me this morning. They said, listen, the only thing selling and floating the boat right now is Super Mel Vitality. That would just people really use it. They love it. Folks know they're getting paid today and tomorrow. We've had hundreds of emails saying, please extend the sale. Hey, fine. I'll just permanently lower the price 20%, okay? If it makes people buy more of it to fund our operation. It's just very expensive to make because it's cold pressed. People love it. So I'll just extend it. I'll extend it through next Monday and just hope that more people order it so we don't lose money. But you 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 know you take it in the morning, take it at night, put it under your tongue, absorb it, stamina, energy, libido. It's just a whole bunch of known, healthy, concentrated herbs into an oil form, cold press, so it keeps its key essence. We have female vitality as well. I, I, I don't ask me why. I guess the audience is mainly male. I don't know why we don't sell as much of the female. Because quite frankly, whether a female takes male or female, the female formula is just a little bit different. That's where you really see effects in certain areas. I'm just going to stop right there. I mean, this gets guys going a little bit. Women, it's dramatic. Dramatic. And uh, I'm here to tell you. So that's not why we sell it. That's not even the angle. It's just that's what everybody notices. That's what's in the reviews. Uh, and so we have Bio True Selenium. That sold out. A little bit more came in. From the mustard seed, that funds our operation, InfoWarsLife.com, or call toll-free, 888-253-3139.
But I got to tell you, the economy must just be absolutely destroyed. I mean, just the amount of traffic is just exponentially higher. Uh, but uh, it's like water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. All right, I want to go to your phone calls now. We don't have any guests today. I want to clear the decks to be able to take your phone calls. We've got just huge amounts of news, huge amounts of different clips I want to play. Uh, there is just so much coming up, but I hate to toot my horn. I mean, I just have a good guesstimation. It's just common sense looking at all the interest there is in this election and how the other debates, you know, we're getting three, four times the viewers that they used to, you know, 20, 30 million. Of course, the first debate with Hillary, 90 minutes. I don't think it's going to be 100 million. I'm predicting, because I'd said it'd be as big as a Super Bowl or bigger. I said 70, 80 million a few weeks ago. But the more I think about this, because it's not one network carrying it, so they can suppress it and not let it get out, because they're doing it right, just having a university feed for everybody. I think that you'll first hear over 100 million in the U.S., and then hundreds of millions worldwide, and then you're going to see numbers once the internet numbers come in a few days later, I think you're going to hear that 500 million, maybe a billion, who knows? I think 500 million people are going to watch it live. More than the population of the U.S., and I think you're going to end up having probably a billion worldwide watch it in the week after. And if she falls out during this thing, oh, I'm telling you, this is epic. The arrogance, the bravado, the chutzpah, the false aplomb, that she has when she knows she's sick. I mean, again, we told you five weeks ago, Hillary Clinton is falling over every 30, 40 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes. And we're like, what has she got? We think epilepsy, obviously. We don't know if it's Parkinson's, brain tumors. Do you know? All we know is they're very secretive about it. And, and, they're, and they're talking about some big announcement if it gets worse. Four weeks later, she fell down, folks, just like we told you. We told you. She does like this in a circle and then falls down. That's why they got to have people beside her at all times. For the last year, everywhere she goes, people stand right beside her, and they're ready. They're watching her. She's stepping. She's being careful because this is serious, and, and stress is what brings on a lot of these seizures. In fact, I remember seeing my uncle one time arguing. He's been married a few times with one of his wives, not even meanly. And he didn't have seizure, and boy, he all of a sudden had a seizure five months later. And and imagine you got to go up against Donald Trump with 100 million people watching live. I mean, she is going down. And they've taught her when she starts having the seizures, you know, just you know, you know, the lighter baby seizures. You just act like it's fun, act like it's cute, just just kind of go through it, be calm. But you look at her; she's clearly not there. And then and then a few days ago, she gave this speech for 15 minutes, and her eyes weren't pointing the right direction. That that video is up on Infowars.com. And what happened? She then canceled all these events this week ahead of Monday. She's in bed, getting special drugs, you name it, trying to get ready. Oh, the, 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 this, oh my God, this political enemy of all of free humanity, this, this monster, this Medusa is falling in front of us. And it's, it's edge of your seat. I, I, I don't know what's going to come out of this. There's so many angles. There's so many things that can happen. But I want to go to break with Obama and then come back directly to your calls. Uh, talking about world government and uh, Americans needing to basically accept it. Uh, this is a 51-second clip. Obama submit to world government. I'm Alex Jones. But we have to put our money. Oh, let's start it over. We have to put our money where our mouth is. Go ahead. But we have to put our money where our mouths are. And we can only realize the promise of this institution's founding. To replace the ravages of war with cooperation, Which you made worse. if powerful nations like my own accept constraints. Sometimes I'm criticized in my own country oh. for professing a belief in international norms. He's getting ready to be the global in government multilateral leader. institutions, but I am convinced that in the long run, giving up some freedom of action. See, not giving up our ability to protect ourselves Give or pursue our core uh -huh. interests, but binding ourselves to international rules Skip this break. I can't help it. over the long term enhances our security. You know, start this over, back it up again, I because I don't want to interrupt this. We have to put our money... This is so mega epic, this 51 second clip that again, you could teach a college course on treatment on treachery, on subterfuge, on infiltration. We as a culture and a society are designed to battle men in uniforms attacking us with their flags. We know what's going on. There's rules to war. But the British in the last 300, 400 years started using corporate ways to take over countries with the British 
East India Company, and then it merged with the Dutch British East India Company. And I've probably read, I'm not bragging, I'm just letting you know I am a scholar. Most professors that, you know, claim they teach those periods of history, I bet you haven't read 20 books on India and the British East India Company and how the Brits controlled them with the great game. I have probably read 50 on that alone. Because I used to be a selfish person. I love history. I used to read a history book almost every day like a pig. From high school right through to about five years into media, I would just go do my show once a day, do a few things, work on a film. You know, I worked eight hours, nine hours a day, but I just never saw myself as being this big shot. So I would go home, and I wouldn't watch TV. If I wasn't taking my girlfriend out or going for a hike or whatever, I would uh, read a history book. I'd look up, it'd be 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. I'd put another big, fat, juicy history book down uh, that I got at the library. Uh, and I don't mean to digress. It's just that what you're witnessing is the British government model of corporately taking over your government. They did it starting in 1922 at Pratt House, the Council on Foreign Relations in New York City. And when I say the Brits taking over, I mean a model of corporate control. The Brits are the biggest slaves out there. Great people, but absolutely enslaved. Their sovereignty being destroyed. The New World Order, George Soros, hates them. So when you hear him get up there and say, we have to give up some of our sovereignty for this world, and he's, quote, being criticized because he pushes that, they've gone from denying all of this to admitting it and saying we need a, quote, liberal new world order. That was in the full speech. I should do a special report just on this treason of speech yesterday. But you notice he is out there like a prostitute shaking his ass on the street corner, you know, to the Johns driving by saying, love you long time. You know, not to buku. He is he is over there on the street corner, shaking his butt in front of the globalists. Everybody prostrating himself and us at the knees of the mega corporations that have looted the third world, saying, "I want to be the secretary general of the UN. I want to be the head of the Davos Group. I want to be the head of the Bilderberg Group. I want to be the head of the IMF or World Bank. I want to graduate to that next level. I've spent my whole life transferring American power into this global government body." And now I want to go to the next level. He is, you know, one last stick in the eye of the American people. Notice he says, this UN building was founded, yeah, by the Rockefellers. It's their land. They gave the money. The most evil, horrible people you could ever imagine setting up a corporate world government for themselves. So do we get apologies on this when we're proven right again? Just like we were proven right on everything else, basically? I wasn't proven right. Rockefeller wrote books bragging about it. <coughs> Dave Rockefeller wrote a book seven, eight years ago admitting he's setting up world government. I'd like to be able to take credit for all this, but I didn't. Let's go ahead and take a call. Let's talk to Frank in Maryland. Frank, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, just turn your radio off. Uh, I'm going to you turn your radio off. <laughs> Please. Go, you go, good. Hello, yeah. Yeah, turn the radio off. Go ahead. Turn this off. Good, yes. I love it. Obama pisses me off. I'm sorry. I love you, Frank. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they were complaining about debates being too long before, but now let's have a three-hour debate and see who can stand and withstand the uh, whole time there. I agree. Debate. Hey, Ted Cruz, man, 26-hour filibuster. I couldn't do that. <laughs> How about? Yeah, well, her? Sorry, go ahead. If Trump pushes out there, she's not going to want to do it. As long as he pushes out there, and once she denies it, you know, then then she'll she'll seem weak. I mean, she knows she can't do it. You are such a genius, Frank. That's a great idea. Trump ought to challenge her to a three-hour debate, an hour and a half of them talking, and then an hour and a half of questions. Since she's so scared of press conferences, you're a genius, Frank. All he has to do is relax and sit back. I mean, even if he makes a mistake, it doesn't matter. I mean, she's going to, you know, even if she stands the whole time, he's still going to look bad for her. Well, plus, she's, she's, so, she's so incredibly sexy. I want to look at her a little bit more. <laughs> Frank, I well, want you to know one of my greatest pitfalls is I, I, you get like a, a, a pet peeve over the years of thousands of calls with the radio on. And I apologize. I was being a jerk earlier. Uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I appreciate you. And that's a great point you made, though. Uh, and it's absolutely central. But how do you deal with it? I get so mad at Obama and the globalists and Hillary 
that my anger spills over in my everyday life watching this treason. How do you deal with that? Because that's that's my biggest problem is I'm so pissed off at them. I guess I care too much. I mean, how do I turn it off and not care? Can you tell me that? No, I went through the whole transformation, like listening to you and your supporters. And it, it, it was hard to go through that. Your supporters helped me through that. And I'm going to tell you, all I realize is good is going to win. I, they're they're going to be bad. Uh, there's always going to be bad out there. I've met the two evil people that I know as friends, whoever. It doesn't matter. I mean, you find the good. And Absolutely, and, and, and I agree with you. Look and, at Hillary collapsing. Look at the Brexit. Look at globalism in trouble. Look at Russia getting out from under it. The, the evil isn't invincible. It's not invincible. It's always, you know, more and more horrible until the dawn actually gets there. And you're absolutely right. I think what I got from what you said was that, hey, look, we're going to make it through this. It was just stage, old man. Yeah, that's all it was, man. It's not, if you don't want to believe in that, that's fine. Just an angel. Want to conquer something that he can't conquer. And that's how it is. And he's going to keep losing. Things get better in life. And people can't feel helpless about that. It hasn't gotten better in this country. I mean, it's not a bad country. I mean, no, it's not. We have bad people that have hijacked it. Frank, I got to jump. You know, just just over the years, talking about pet peeves. That guy was making great points. But then you hear how his phone goes in and out where you can't understand him. So you're sitting there trying to understand what he's saying. And then when you understand it, it's like, oh, that made sense. And then you can't understand it for five seconds. And then, oh, that made sense. And it just becomes torture because you want to hear the caller, you want to hear the great things they have to say. But then you wonder, they're going to have their radio up. They're going to say hello, 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 over and over again to you. And then their phone's going to start going in and out. And, and then you think, you know, I'm supposedly a tough guy. I should be able to handle this. It's 20 plus years of it. It starts to get to you. Now maybe what's happening is the veneer of civilization is peeling away for all of us. For the globalist, for the average person, you name it. A quickening is happening. Judgment Day, the hand of doom, but also the hand of opportunity, moves in all of our lives. Second hour, 70 seconds away, Infowars.com. Get the free app today. Thank the new app is out. What happens when they break the law so much that not breaking the law becomes criminal? That the too-big-to-fail corruption spreads so horribly that there seems to be no end to it. But instead of civilization collapsing, as it's done before, and giving us a reprieve from the tyrants, even though it's a, a painful reprieve, it's better than tyranny and the engine of dehumanization that follows. The great battering ram of dehumanization. But what happens when technocracy can hold up the false reality? Humanity will now be taken into realms of which we have never experienced. I want to take a lot of your phone calls this hour. I took one call last hour, so I'm not doing too well. I'm going to try to take as many of your calls as I can. If you just joined us, Hillary set to debate Donald Trump for 90 minutes next week. Can she make it? Will she show up? Will she be there? Will she have a coughing fit? Will she collapse? That's three different bets, isn't it? Will she make it? Will she show up? That's one. Another bet, I guess there's four, is what will her stunt be if she doesn't show up? Three, will she have a coughing fit or will she completely collapse? Or, or five, will she have to like delay it for 20 or 30 minutes and I mean, how are they going to pull this off? This is this is like 50 times worse than I was like six years old and still cared about Christmas. And like you're three months out from Christmas and, you know, you're already hearing Christmas music, but you want to know when, when you're going to get the presents. I mean, this is torture, but in a good way. How could anybody say they're bored? Uh, we're going to go to Eric, uh, Michael, George, Clifford, Scott, and many others. Uh, let's go to Eric in California. Eric, thanks for calling. Yeah, how you doing? Good, sir. Um, she needs brain force or female vitality, first of all. <laughs> um, second of all, um, you know, she does make it. Trump is going to chew her up, so she might collapse because Trump is going to eat her up so bad. And um, she probably right now resting, highly drugged up, you know, Getting ready, but um, honestly, they might know something is coming, so we might not even make it to the debate. You know what I mean? I, and, um, I mean, I agree. They've got off. CNN, uh, you know, writers saying something's big coming, that nothing will matter soon. So don't worry, Trump people. You think you're going to win? Oh, yeah, wait when the big thing happens in the next month. We're like, well, what is it? 
Yeah, um, and then somebody needs to bring George Soros to justice, you know, because it's getting real serious. He's been caught red-handed, and um, it's, it's that serious, you know. It's like I don't understand the people in power, Obama and all these other people, they make, they're talking about everything except for what's, what's real, you know. And um, Did you hear that clip earlier of Obama saying America's got to give up sovereignty at the U.N.? That's what I'm saying. They're giving away the, the Internet and all this. Everybody's sitting around praising this man. And he's giving away the government. Well, I mean, he's that's it. Exactly, exactly. Like exactly. That's why I feel so crazy right now, because I can't cover it all. Nine days from now, they hand the Internet over to the U.N. So, you know, I just, I just, I'm, I'm feeling really some type of way about all this, and I wish I had more power to be able to do something. All I could do is, you know, try to change people's minds. That well, that's an important question, Eric. Are you feeling what I'm feeling? Definitely, definitely. I'm, I, I'm, I go to a therapist and tell my therapist that all this, all this that I got high anxiety because of all this. You know? I do too. I do and, too. Um, and by the way, statistics show people that don't listen to this show and people that aren't politically involved, they're having the highest anxiety of anybody. So it's not just us. The whole world is picking up on the stuff that's going on. We are on the edge of, of just incredibly bad things happening. Almost all the honeybees are dying. All these wars are getting started. We're run by crazy people. Debt bubbles are about to implode. The German government says get ready for collapse. I don't know. I don't know what's coming, but my gut level of instinct's never been wrong, and it's on fire right now. I have never felt like this, okay? In 20-plus years on air, I have never felt this concerned. We're going to take more of your calls straight ahead. Great points, Eric. You're awesome. We'll be back. Thanks for calling. All right, here's the big question. Will Hillary Clinton... Come in and try to suspend the debate next week where she's going to be head to head with Donald Trump for 90 minutes from 8 o'clock Central to 930 Central. We're going to be here covering it live with the actual feed because now it's open to the public. Anybody can get the feed from the university. We're going to be carrying it. So it won't be us talking over it the whole time, but us, that's how we're able to carry other uh, debates because we have analysis and critique on it. We'll, we'll do that for a couple hours after the debate and take your calls. Uh, and also for an hour before the debate. But but my big question is, will Hillary even make it to the debate? And if she does, will she fall down? Or or will she have another coughing fit? Now, there's a new story up on Infowars.com that is extremely important. It is red-linked. And it's an article by Paul Joseph Watson. Alert, the October surprise will be a violent provocation blamed on Trump. Hillary is desperate and will resort to dirty tricks. You're also in negotiation, basically, with the family of uh, Obama, the Kenyan folks that got the video of him visiting Kenya that's never been seen, of him bad-mouthing America and white people. Paul Watson is in negotiation. They say they're giving it to us. That article uh, is up on Infowars.com. I mean, we're a major news source, and we're a news provider, and we get all these whistleblowers and data dumps. It makes my head spin. And by the way, I'm not complaining, but you heard the last caller saying he's having all this anxiety about what's happening. I am too, but that's normal. You have anxiety for a reason. So if you see a white van pull up and some guy telling your five-year-old in the backyard to get in it, you have a bunch of anxiety. That anxiety is to make you go out there and save your kid and probably call the police and if you need to, kick that person, you know, in the next week. Uh, I mean, that's why we have these anxieties. And it's not just our listeners. Everybody I talk to, and, and the, the studies are out. Times of London, New York Times. Anxiety is at an all-time high in the modern world. But it's also at an all-time high in the third world because all these unnatural, dangerous things are happening. Humanity is in crisis. And I don't say that to be negative or to have fear porn. I say that so people are aware of it, so we can recognize the good, the bad from the ugly, so we can try to turn off of this course, which is starting to happen. And the globalists are panicking because of that. So many people say, Alex, why don't you be more positive and believe good things are going to happen? Great things are happening because we're admitting the problems we have. If I had a skin cancer and denied I had it and just let it grow and kill me, I'd be a fool with magical thinking, but if I went and got it cut off or took the right herbs or whatever you believe in, whatever helped, then I would be proactive. And I'm here exposing globalists because I know when we expose them, it defeats them. This act is extremely positive. If you had a big cyst on the bottom of your foot, one time I stepped on a nail, 
Didn't even tell my parents about it. Went all the way through my foot. About two weeks later, it all swole up. I was like 10 years old. My foot was the, you know, had a swelling the size of a baseball. And I went to the doctor and they lanced it. It was so gross. And all this blood and pus poured out. But I felt so good by the time I got home. The pain was gone, basically. Like, well, that's really gross, you know, admitting you had all that pus and your foot was about to rot off. Well, I was a tough kid. I just ignored stuff. We were in a construction site running around playing in it. You know how kids do and step on a nail through a board and ah, I want to keep playing. I'm just going to ignore this. <laughs> I wasn't ignoring it about a week, week and a half later when a green and purple and, and yellow stuff was pouring out of it. So, yeah, that's ugly. Yeah, that's gross. And it stunk, by the way. The doctor was even going, ugh, ugh. but I'm telling you. It saved my life. And, and we're here try, trying to admit, hey, our foot's swollen. We're going to get gangrene here. We got to get the pus out. And that's what I'm doing. And I've gone a little crazy doing it. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, because the energy level is rising. The responsibility level is rising. And for whatever amount of power the devil gives his people, God's giving us that much power back. And it's like tying into a high power tension wire. I mean, this is like, I mean, this is hard to handle. Everybody who's fighting tyranny is getting it. The discernment, the understanding, the energy, it's all intensifying right now. This is a magic time to be alive, folks. This is metaphysical, what's happening. Don't make any mistakes about that. And it's only going to get crazier from here on out. I want to go to your phone calls right now. Uh, we've got George in Connecticut and uh, Michael in New Hampshire and Carl in Florida and Clifford uh, is actually up next in Delaware, and Scott. We're going to get to all of you this hour. Again, Paul Watson has a key report. Alert. The October surprise will be a violent provocation blamed on Trump. Hillary is desperate and will resort to dirty tricks. We'll uh, talk to Paul and play that report coming up in the next hour. That's up on Infowars.com. But let me hit this right now, or I'll never get to all the news. Let me hit this right now, and then we'll get back to your calls. Um, we've known that terrorists have been coming into Europe with the refugees. ISIS two years ago or two and a half years ago said in press releases, we've already flooded you with millions. We're going to flood you with millions more. A large percentage are our people. We're going to have asymmetrical attacks. And then a year later, the attack started. And the media would be like, are these terror attacks? Are these ISIS related? Weeks after they admit they were attacks to keep you in the dark. The media knows. And again, then the government takes our rights away, doesn't kick them out. People say, well, this is a false flag. The government's evil, Alex. Why are you saying there's Islamic attacks? They're all fake. No, bringing them in is the, is the false flag. It's real terror groups. This is a major Islamic Sunni jihad worldwide. So now, this is a story from the Houston Chronicle. It's posted up on Infowars.com. Texas, God bless our governor, threatens to, and I don't mean the one that won Dancing with the Stars last night. Uh, Texas, though that was cute, I saw it this morning. Texas threatens to exit the federal refugee program over terrorist concerns. They won't even tell Governor Abbott the numbers that are coming, and this is ongoing for two years. Now, they've been forced at the State Department to admit that they know terrorists are coming in. That is intentional harm. Aiding and abetting terrorists. That, that, I mean, if you or I did that, 20, 30 years in prison, we deserve it. The government does it, Obama does it, and it's supposedly okay. No, it's not okay when the president commits crimes. Nixon thought that and see what happened to him. And boy, I, 20 years ago, I, I thought Nixon was a bad guy, and he, he did do some bad stuff, but that guy was a patriot compared to what we got. He thought he was doing it for America. These people are doing it to intentionally screw us. So there's like a murder one intent. Nixon was unintentionally doing stuff that hurt the country and was illegal. This stuff is openly, flagrantly, nakedly, just, 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 it's crazy town. I mean, I'll give the globalists this. They are brazen. So we've got the State Department admits ISIS smuggling in terrorists among refugees. And then we've got the State Department takes heat for Clinton's pay-for-play scheme where you just give them money and you get an appointment. We got Michael McCall, Texas congressman, admits we don't have the ability to vet refugees. We've known this the whole time. They don't vet them on purpose because they're Wahhabist invaders of Syria. They're not Syrian refugees. They're the globalist army, the Islamic globalist army that got its butt handed to it by the Syrians and by the Russians. Our government, our criminal government, started this six years ago. They even got that in the Snowden movie. When they turn the power off nationwide before the jihad attack. I tell you, this is sick.
The people around our country are really sick. Uh, no, no, there were some Christians in Syria, though, and that was the target. You know, that doesn't make sense geopolitically. It's spiritual, folks. When you look at money, that's how they control us. The top globalists don't care about money. Hillary's a minion and wants money. She's a lower-level demon. The top generals, they're not about money. They're about killing Christians and innocents. Let's go to the clip of the State Department admits ISIS smuggling and terrorists. We feel good that it is an, uh, it's done appropriately, it's done thoroughly, that the vetting is good. Um, and the president has talked about the fact that we're going to up the number of sure. total refugees to more than 100,000 for fiscal year 17. Yeah. I wouldn't debate the fact that there's uh, the potential for ISIS terrorists to try to insert themselves. And we've seen that in some of the refugee camps uh, in Jordan and in Turkey where they're trying to insert themselves into the population. Right. But again, the vetting process, while not perfect, is very, very stringent. And it takes no. it can take almost up to two years for a single refugee well, to make it, it to the country. One all right, then that's State Department spokesman Rear Admiral John Kirby. Notice they use, like, you know, these American patriot type guys that look like, you know, Mr. America to sit there and push this crap. That guy knows it's far worse than they're saying. The numbers are probably 50 times what they're saying. I mean, there's 50 to 100,000 refugees in Austin alone. They are crawling all over the place. North, south, east, west. Drive past a park. Hundreds. Women in burkas. Go to the mall. Burkas everywhere. Burkas, burkas everywhere. Let's go to this other clip. State Department takes heat for Clinton's pay for play scheme. This just gets into all the corruption. Same, same thing. I know you've been answering a lot of questions about pay for play. Now uh, it turns out that 194 donors, either to the Clinton, Hillary Clinton campaign or to the Clinton Foundation, were awarded slots on State Department advisory boards. And it certainly is not illegal. That does happen. But it does, the whole pay for play thing comes into the question about no, how did these illegal. people who simply gave money to the Clintons, wind up on the State Department advisory boards. Well, I've seen the press reporting on this. I haven't actually seen the actual list that you're talking about, but no, I am yeah, aware the of, of the story. Um, so I, I'm afraid they I don't, don't have the much time uh, to confirm uh, the actual information in there. That said, and I won't speak for the decisions that they made uh, when Secretary Clinton was Secretary of State. What I can tell you is that these advisory boards are important. They uh, they do help us do a better job uh, at the This State is all been whitewash. Uh, if you're a TV viewer, I want to back this up because it was just showing a clip of Hillary. What's with that weird great white shark cresting thing she does i've talked about this before but more i look at her it's like she's not human like she's wearing a rubber mask where she walks on stage and like hi i'm hillary you know it's like what the like demon leaves her or something and she i mean you're like it's like the joker if you put green paint on her she's ready to star in the next batman i mean she's way creepier than the guy that committed suicide that, that played the Joker, and he was pretty darn, you know, darn creepy. We'll be back with your phone calls straight ahead. Your calls, George and others, uh, uh, Clifford, you name it, stay with us. Coming up, a flashback to September a few months ago, or, or it was re republished, I guess this happened uh, back in July. Man attacked while predicting ISIS attack. This turned out to be basically a prophet. He's in New York. He says, ISIS is coming in, they're in the refugees, ISIS admits they're coming in with the refugees, and they're going to uh, get massive numbers here and then start attacking us. You know, Donald Trump's not bad saying vet them, and they attack the poor guy. And then a few months later, exactly what he says ends up happening. And, and look, my point is, you can say the terror threat's overblown, you can say whatever you want, and, and, and I agree. It's overblown in that they let these people in, they attack us, and then we're told we have to be all spied on by the NSA. But this latest attacker's dad told him two years ago he was a terrorist going to the Middle East to train to attack, and the government did nothing. And then it turns out the FBI had him on a list but didn't do anything again. It's a joke. You let him in here. So that society becomes unstable so you can come in and end our free society. You bring people in who aren't compatible with a free society. Let me give you a better analogy. There's a great party going on. 200 people are there. It's on the seaside. There's a big pool. There's a band playing jazz. And you want to ruin the party. And you take a big old pitcher. A crap. You've been saving up at home every morning. And you go in there and you dump all those turds in the punch bowl. 
and then and then you sit there and say, hey, I've got to shut this party down because that would that would shut the party down. It'd be so gross and so disgusting. No more party. George Soros has crapped in the punch bowl. Well, that's George Soros and his son. They they climb up at your party, pull their drawers down, hang their hairy butts over the punch bowl, and then crap all over us and tell us they're messiahs. Excuse my French, but I mean I've had it with these people. So that's all coming up too. Let's go ahead and go back to your phone calls. This is a short segment, long segment coming up. Who is up first? Or is it Clifford or is it George? Uh, I think George is actually first, then Clifford. Uh, George, you're on the air. Will Hillary make the debate? I think she's not going to make it, but I think uh, everybody should take a look at uh, some of the pictures of Hillary on the web before and after she falls over. I mean, she went on a great diet. She lost uh, 20 pounds and uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, fat around the face, too. I mean, which, which Hillary are we going to have at the debate? One of the three uh, clones she, she has there? And, uh, you know, uh, it's ridiculous. I think um, um, uh, Trump should go into the, the debate with the uh, placards or little little signs like uh, Perot did, you know, with the illustrations and everything, all the lies and uh, all the dead bodies and things like that. And, you know, say, Henry, can you explain how, why these people always drop dead just before they're supposed to testify? You know, I mean, this is just a coincidence, right? I mean, the, what do you have, 50 people in a row? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, George, that's a whole other question, is what is Trump going to hit her with? So, A, do you think she's going to show up? You brought up the, dub, the, the, the whole body double thing. I don't know if that's really going on. I know LBJ did it. Some other presidents did it. In the 21st century with HD, even the best body doubles aren't very uh, usable in something like a debate. I mean, th this would be the biggest Academy Award winning actress ever if she, A, looked like Hillary and could pull it off. I mean, people are calling it a body double because she looks so bad just compared to a few months ago. But, you know, now she's trying to morph into Donald Trump. She's styling her hair like his. She's standing in front of the airplane like he does. She, she's saying, you know, have strong vetting of refugees uh, like he says. Uh, so who knows? But if she does make the debate, do you think she'll make it through 90 minutes? I mean, I don't know how she can make it when she can never stand up more than 15 minutes. What will what will the demonic chipmunk do? I don't think it's possible, but uh, maybe uh, uh, we're going to have some help from the president since he's going to be the chairman of the U.N. Uh, Security Council, I hear. Well, he already was for a while. That was very treasonous. He did that, what, six years ago for a, uh, what, eight-month term or however it works. Because uh, it varies six months to a year. I think he served eight months as the head of the U.N. Security Council while he was the president. Totally illegal. Uh, just another way to, again, do you know what, the punch bowl. And the name of this segment will be titled George Soros Craps in America's Punch Bowl. Uh, excuse me, folks, but um, the allegory fits, so I must use it. I'm not normally a vulgar person, but only vulgarity matches uh, that of the repose of the great demon king, George Soros. Clifford, Scott, Carl, Anthony, your calls are straight ahead. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. The speeches are so short, though. They don't last long. You know, they're like... Ten minutes, let's get out of here. Go back home and go to sleep. <laughs> Three days later, she gets up and she does another one and goes back home and goes to sleep. Please let that man be president. Oh, boy, is ISIS hoping for her. Is China hoping? Can you imagine China? They come in. They have a negotiate with the Chinese. They're tough. They're tough. You got to hit them back with a lot of energy. That was a month ago. That was in the middle of August. We're now 21 days uh, into September. The big debate's coming up next Monday. And he sent out a bunch of tweets yesterday saying, where is she? She's canceled these events. Now she won't be seen until the debate next Monday. And when they have her disappear for three, four days, she's able to come out, do a 15, 20 minute speech, start coughing as soon as she walks off the stage and stumble. And then when she's on her airplane doing individual press interviews, they're very short, they're very quick. She looks bombed out of her brain on suppressants, which is what you take when you have a brain tumor or epileptic uh, episodes. Brain tumor causing epileptic episodes. And then the word we've got is brain tumor. And then it's spread to her lungs as well. And I'm 
I have that from super high level sources whose voices shake when they tell me it. Because it's not good to be one of those whistleblowers. I am a madman, as everyone knows. That's why you get the information here. And by the way, I don't want to be the guy that gives you the information. Other people won't do it. I'll do it. Same thing Trump's doing. Other people won't step up at the plate and take on the globalist. And take their neck off our throat. Trump's doing it. By the way, he's not perfect. You know, he says Snowden's a traitor, execute him and stuff. Because he's this old school deal where, hey, you give up our secrets, we're going to kill you. That's why he's going up against the globalists and Hillary's selling us out. It pisses him off if you sell us out to foreign powers. Trump is not very tech savvy. He's got advisors and, and, and they're not saying kill Snowden. But, he, you know, he doesn't use the Internet, folks, other than Twitter. That's no. So none of us are perfect. That's like when he said, we got to bring the refugees in. Their Christians are being murdered. They went, sir, it's 0.4 percent. They're not letting the Christians out. They're bringing in unvetted Wahhabis. He said, shut them all down. They're not vetting them. People go, oh, he flip-flopped. No, as he gets better info, he moves to it and says, I got better info. He's called a leader. And quite frankly, next time I talk to him, either on air or, or off, I'll uh, just say, you know, Snowden really is a hero, sir. And uh, I think that's one area I disagree with you on. But you're talking to Donald Trump on the phone. You just have a tendency not to disagree with him, which is a problem. You know, I did challenge him the one time he came on. And by the way, we can get Donald Trump back on. I've left it alone. Because the thoughts are, is it good to come on or is it bad? And I can't say for 100% sure that they couldn't twist it to hurt Trump. And I don't want to be the guy who people point out and say, you know, you had him on and they tied him to this and that. And, you know, now Trump's lost. I, so I'm kind of like, maybe you shouldn't come on right now. Because it isn't that big a deal to get Trump on the air. That, that, that doesn't even really boost our ratings much. Uh, what does is breaking news, breaking major analysis, uh, having you know a huge effect in the world, uh, being able to you know to talk to Trump and and bounce ideas around and and, and see him understand it and then actually you know research it and then do something about it. That's what's exciting. I think I would much rather have a twenty minute phone conversation with Donald Trump uh, than even have him on air because it's that private type of conversation. I missed a phone call from him just a few weeks ago, I get so upset when I do, and it's just like, because, I mean, I'm going to have a real talk with Donald Trump. That, that's what's important, because he's real, folks. And it's just an amazing time to be alive, because I don't care about Hollywood stars. I, I, I mean, I, I used to not care much. I mean, I don't care at all. I was at Hollywood parties 10 years ago. There'd be like 20 people there, and Brad Pitt would be there, and I was just boring talking to Brad Pitt. Boring, boring, boring. I was like, let's get out of here and go, you know, to a national park and hike or something. That'd be fun, right? Or let's let's try to go surfing. I heard I can take surf lessons around here. And I'll just leave and go surfing. I mean, I just, it just, it, 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 but people have never been there. They don't know how empty it is. So they think it's magic. It's powerful. It's incredible. You know how boring it is to be an actor? It's a joke. It's all a joke. I piss on Hollywood. And I don't say that from some power trip perspective. What I do love, though, is learning that every actor I had a weird connection to and really liked, and, and, and there was something about them that I just felt like they were family. And then you find out they're a patriot and you find out they're into what you do and they're and they're daily listeners. Then there's a kinship. And that's exciting. That's exciting. But not because they're Hollywood stars, but because a Kurt Russell is so cool. A Jeff Bridges is so cool. That's what's cool about that is that you always knew there was something about them. There was something real about them. And it's because they're patriots. So when I talk about Donald Trump and admiring him, it's not because he's famous. In fact, when I saw him as a TV host and a hotel owner and a golf course owner, I was kind of like, yeah, you know, cheesy. Okay, he's got a hot wife. Boring. Pop media. Don't want to know about Trump. So I started putting two and two together. I'm going to your calls about three years ago. I'm like, 
why is this famous person I'm having dinner with bringing up Donald Trump? Like, oh, here, like another glass of wine. What do you think about Donald Trump? You're sitting there going, the casino owner? I don't know. Guy with orange hair? I don't know anything about him. You're fired. Because, you know, I know about politics and stuff. I, I'm kind of blind to a lot of pop stuff. I'm like, well, Donald Trump's a patriot. and He's going to be, you know, trying to take America back and stuff. And, you know, kind of likes what you're doing. And you're like going, oh, okay. can we move on to the discussion? But the third or fourth time that happened, I'm like, what's going on here? And then it all started to click Trump the whole time. And I'm now this, I've confirmed this, has known what's going on. Before I was born, he knew. His dad knew. They've been anti-New World Order like John Birch people for 50-something years. I don't mean like in the John Birch Society, but basically that informed. And that's why the globalists have dossiers on the Trumps. They are in terrified fits. And the emails from the State Department, the White House, Bohemian Grove, Bilderberg, all of it, they are in a panic. Because Donald Trump knows he can't lose. Donald Trump is ready for them to gut him down. When he gets out right in front of people in California, they block the road, just walks right in front of them. When he just stands there grandstanding, when somebody rushes the stage, he goes to knock him out. He knows he can't lose. He gets in as the president, he's going to fight for this country. And he knows as long as he fights for it and does his best job, you're going to support him, he wins. They blow him away, he becomes a huge martyr for liberty, he wins. He stepped into destiny. And not many men I know out there understand that being a man means stepping into destiny. You're watching history and destiny unfold right now. And, and like a race car, I apologize. A lot of days I come in here and I'm scatterbrained and I'm angry and I'm upset because there's just thousands of things I want to say and so many angles I want to cover and so many important things and there's no way to get to it all. But I'm just here to tell you, I love the viewers and the listeners. I thank you. I'm humbled by your support. I know I'm a train wreck half the time, but our spirits are the same. God bless you, and I thank you for all you do. I'm going to go to your phone calls now. You've been holding long enough. We have Watson joining us with a huge bombshell news coming up, a uh, special report. We've got so much to get to, but let me let me just say this briefly. Uh, Buckley ran in uh, during the last break. I think they have a screenshot of it ready. Uh, we're number 30-something. We'll have to put it on screen so I can give you the actual number. Uh, in just two days of the new InfoWars app, so we are number 30. I, I didn't remember exactly which 30. We are number 30 on the free apps on Apple of hundreds of thousands of apps in two days. Two days we are number 30. I mean, Xbox, the free app with hundreds of free games, you name it, is 27. Hundreds of billions of dollars pumped into Xbox. Hundreds of millions, no doubt, into their apps. And we are already in 48 hours on their tail. What do you think of that? Google Play Movies and TV is 31. InfoWars Live. Just to give you a little snapshot of who you are. We are the future. We are the majority. When I tell you we have 30 million listeners a week, folks, that's what we can aggregate with our sensors. We, uh, experts believe that... The, YouTube's vice president told me two years ago, we can track 5 billion views of your videos that have your name in it. You are the biggest thing on YouTube. Not political. The biggest thing. Let us kick everyone off that has your content and monetize it. And you could be getting a million dollars a month instead of 30000 40000 And I said, I'm not doing that. I want the information to get out. Maybe I should monetize, and then I can fund everything. But see, the problem is, I'd rather have, and that was two years ago. Lord knows what it is now. They can see that. I can't. Lord knows what that is now, because everybody's allowed to run our stuff and put ads on it. Because I don't care about the money. I care about the views. I care about changing people's minds. Five billion views on other people's channels. Two years ago, close to a billion and a half conservatively on our own channels, right at a billion now on the Alex Jones channel. So when I say five billion views, that's two years old, folks. I don't, I don't know what it is now. Because when I didn't play ball, Google stopped talking to me. They were like, fly out to San Francisco. We'll fly out. Let's just get it on right now. Google's ready. Let's do it.
I said, well, I don't want to kick all these tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of videos off. I don't want to have that content lost. Yeah, but you understand, they're monetizing your content. And so a lot of them are, are you know, we want to make a special partnership with you where and we're going to promote you, blah, blah, blah. But it was just like Facebook, too. Like, Facebook would like you to fly to New York and like to meet with you. But can you kind of knock it off a little bit? We can really help you. You, you know, you won't just have a couple million people on Facebook. How about 100 million, Alex? And I'm like, I've heard this before. No, how about, how about no? How about never? Okay, I'm just not, I'm not. I, 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 why would I sell out to the New World Order? I, I mean, I'm not signing on to your spirit. You understand? I cannot get in bed with you because you're, you're really disgusting to me, okay? I'd rather die than get in bed with you. You understand? I can't, I can't get excited around you. I mean, you know, if you want to use that metaphysical example, I'm, if your kids are listening, you know, tell them to turn away right now. I can't get it up for the New World Order. You understand that? See, I'm not with you. I'll never be with you. And I'm just an average person. I'm a nobody. Look at how one guy from Texas is like tearing the living hell out of you. Look at Donald Trump tearing you up. That's just people that are willing to stand up to you and don't care if you kill us. What are you going to do when more people stand up? Don't you get we're only the prototype? We're only the early version? It gets worse from here on out as the machines take on humanity, as you try to dehumanize us, as you shut us down. It gets worse for you. You're on the losing side. You're like a training droid for us. That's all you are in God's plan. But you are so delusional because your little God has given you power that you think we're going to fail. 48 hours and we are defeating Google's free video app. We are three spaces, or no, two spaces behind Xbox with their app out for years. What does that tell you? It tells you massive numbers. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands, if not millions, have already downloaded the free app. Just an example of you. You have the power. You're the majority. And they do everything they can that you never figure that out. Where do you get the app? Infowars.com forward slash APP. Infowars.com forward slash show has a link. Or go to the Droid or Apple stores. It's free. Go to the free section and type in Infowars Live. Free video feeds, audio feeds. We're about to add alerts, uh, live events. I'm going to do special every day separately. I'm going to do whole shows every day, quite frankly. I'm going to start waking up at 3 a.m. and doing shows. Instead of walking around my house in the middle of the night, worried about stuff, I'm just going to literally turn it on in front of the couch by myself. We're going in, through, and beyond. All right, let's go to your calls. I've done okay. I've taken seven or eight calls. I won't take more now. Let's go to Clifford uh, in Delaware. Clifford, you're on the air. Go ahead. Thanks for holding. Hey, Alex, you can toot your own horn anytime, brother. You're doing a wonderful well, no, it's job. It's our horn, brother. The Liberty Movement's big and popular and sexy. And I'm proud of you on a winning team. So uh, I wanted to tell you, boss, um, that I believe that Hillary Clinton will make the debate. It's not going to be the whole debate. She'll probably make it about 45 minutes, and then our government will have already a crisis already on standby. It'll break loose, and then that'll be the end of the debate because they'll have to go to an emergency broadcast, and there will be no more debate for that evening. And that way it saves Hillary a fallout. And uh, Well, that's what I'm thinking. I think, I mean, because I mean, they control ISIS. Hillary literally founded it. They could have an ISIS attack right before uh, to try to cancel it. I mean, I mean, they could do anything. I agree with you. What else do you think? Uh, what else I think is I want to ask you that um, you know how, you know, the economy's propped up right now by the government. Everything's propped up. Just, you know, waiting for the, you know, for the right, you know, cue to go off. But my question is, how can we continue to allow migrants to come into the country if, our, if we wind up collapsing as a nation, like the economy collapses and, and then they issue, issue martial law? We're going to be so, they're going to be so tied up with getting us all rounded up and under control that how are they going to be able to control the migrants coming across the border, giving them the bus? Well, that's and, all part of the hysteria. And, and the migrants already come from a collapsed economy, so they'll just kind of hang out, you know, and... In, in, in migrant camps and in poor things and be used as a permanent underclass to drive down wages. But uh, look, the globalists don't care. Soros will just manage whatever crisis happens, have his companies be appointed by the government as the managers and then launder his own money back through his own organizations, exacerbating the crisis. That's what he does. That's what you should do, Alex. Have a reward. Have people start donating to Infowars for a reward to get, you know, for the, uh, for the uh, apprehension 
you know, of, uh, of George Soros. You know, yeah, I mean, you know, that sounds like a great idea. There's that, the, the, the problem is he is wanted in some countries. That gets into bounty hunting, very serious laws. If you don't do that right, it's a felony. Uh, so that's the, the reason we can't do that. Soros is mainly like a rotting figurehead of a larger evil iceberg under the water. Uh, but uh, what we do need is people to support us. God bless you. I appreciate your call, Clifford. We're going to go to break and come right back with uh, Carl, no, Scott, then Carl, then Anthony, and Shane, and others. Now, speaking of money, uh, we don't make money spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a, on a really cutting-edge app and then giving it out for free. But we do selling Super Mel Vitality and X2. I'm just extending it. Because people really asked us to extend it until they got their paychecks. We have literally, Buckley was showing me, hundreds of emails came in saying, I'm getting paid Thursday or Friday. Please wait. I want 20% off on Super Mel Vitality. So you got it. I'm going to extend it right through to next week. And we've got the methylcobalamin, vitamin B12. Um, it's 80%. Methylcobalamin, 20% acenophil. I forget how you pronounce it. Point is, that activates the other 80%. It's the best formula out there for the researchers. You take it under your tongue. And it works amazingly. Infowarslive.com. That's 20% off as well. Whether it's water filtration, books, videos, Hillary for prison shirts, that's how we move this war machine forward against the globalists. Our weapon is truth. So thanks for the support. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslive.com, or 888-253-3139. Look, one reason I don't like callers calling and telling me how great I am is that it's the fact that there's patriots all over this country and world that are awake is how we're even able to have a show like this. There's a market for the truth. And that builds economies of truth and builds systems based on truth. And that competes with a New World Order monopoly system that's going to replace humans in their own admission. And so don't thank me. I want to thank you. We're all in this symbiotically together. I mean, look at this. Microsoft will solve cancer within 10 years by reprogramming disease cells. Do you really believe that the eugenicist that wants to reduce world population and says we should you know, not take care of old people really wants to do that? I mean, he's a horrible person. But that is a question. Will the desires and dreams of good humans be able to defeat the desires of the evil folks that are in control? Exclusive doctor planning world's first head transplant say he is prepared for his Frankenstein surgery by reanimating human corpses. That's the type of stuff that's going on. High fat cheese, the secret to healthy life. All these studies, it turns out, they knew for 50 years that natural high fats are essential to be healthy, live longer, and to make up your brain and tissues. They told you, though, don't have them and just have a bunch of sugar. What you don't want is trans fats. That's always been known. But see, a lot of complex, high-quality fat makes your brain work really well. They don't want you there. They want you in a brain fog. I mean, look, if I need energy, that cheese looks delicious. Mm. What's the name of that yellow in there in the middle? That is a really tasty one. A little Swiss cheese, whatever that is. Oh, my gosh. Talk about brain food. I mean, I get higher than a cut off a big old piece of cheese because that's what it is. Food is our energy. It's what we're meant to operate off of. Okay, I know I'm saying a lot of stuff that's common sense out there, but remember, the general public doesn't know that. That's why we're here to restore common sense. Like, hey, did you know the Trumps are out hunting Triceratops? That's terrible. I want them to be arrested. Hey, lady, Triceratops haven't lived in 20-something million years. That shows how dumbed down these people are. We're here not grandstanding that we're smarter than them or informed. We're the folks that somehow got through the net and were able to be informed, had parents that cared about us or whatever the case was. We've got to reach out to these victims and say, listen, you're not an intellectual liberal. You're a drooling moron. The next hour is going to be totally jam-packed, and I'm not just saying that. I've got, I've got, I had like two hours of stuff I haven't gotten to yet. Get ready. But right now, let's continue with your calls. Uh, Scott in Pennsylvania, you're on the air. The debates. Will Hillary show up? How can she? Hey, Alex. Hi. 12-year listener, first-time caller. Thank you, uh, sir. Two quick, two, two quick things, Alex. First, uh, uh, first of all, I've listened to you uh, over the years, and I've never felt the way I've been feeling the last few weeks. Nightmares, anxieties, my gut churning. I truly believe in my heart of hearts we're not going to get to the debate, Alex. Um, I think something's going to happen in the next five to six days that's going to cancel the debate. Just my, uh, just my feeling in my gut. I mean, I agree uh, with you that I've never had trouble sleeping. And I don't even call it nightmares. I just have the wildest, craziest political dreams every night. And I'm just like constantly waking up. It's just, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm going to bed at like nine at night now because I wake up so much. And then I get up earlier and earlier. I just go to bed at like midnight. 
But and the second thing, Alex, I have a family friend who works for uh, Homeland Security. Uh, he's being sequestered from October 1st till the end of the year in a uh, undisclosed location. He's not allowed to come home for the holidays, not allowed to contact his wife or family. I think something really major is coming down. Has he ever done something like this before? No, he has not. No, he's never been. Well, I mean, we know they have the U.N. and E.U. overseeing our election this year. Yeah, it's just really, really scary, Alex, you know, and uh, in the area I live in here in Pennsylvania has always been blue. I live near uh, Allentown, Bethlehem area, and uh, and I do a lot of driving around for my job, and I have not seen, no lie, I have not seen one Hillary sign except for a couple of Hillary for prison signs. Same here. Um, I, I see hardly any of them in, in a Democrat city like Austin. That's what I mean. She has no crowds. She ha It's all a hoax. It's all a giant hoax, and they're crazy enough to sell this hoax. And we've got 47 days out from the election. This is the most incredible time to ever be alive, folks. And you're living it. You're living it. Thank you for listening. We'll be back with the third and fourth hour. Thank you, Scott. Amazing caller. Great points. Carl, you're up next. Get ready. Well, Obama came out yesterday to the U.N. and said we should give up our sovereignty to the U.N. They actually said that. That's their problem. You know, When they actually try to establish world government, they can't deny it exists anymore. They can't deny it's unelected. So now they're calling it the liberal world order to fight racism. That means use the third world as a weapon to bring down what's left of Western countries or wealthy countries to make everybody poor, and then the globalists have finished their takeover. While they race to replace us with robots. That's all being announced. So it's a, a quite a pickle we're in, but we still see a lot of opportunities to turn this around. Will Hillary make the debate next Monday? It's set to have more viewers in the Super Bowl. They're talking about 100 million in the Hill newspaper, talking to insiders and experts that are already gauging interest. I agree with that. I said bigger than the Super Bowl or as big two weeks ago. Or will they stage something to get her out of it? Or will she collapse during it? Let's talk to Carl in Florida. What do you think, Carl? Jones? Hey, brother, go ahead. Hey, real quick. What I'm thinking is they know how high the stakes are. I'm fairly certain that they're going to wedge her by just past this, you know, this whole debate business. You know, I expect her to show up with her, you know, anti-seizure contact lenses on, you know, <laughs> completely. You know, she's, she's going to probably be pumped up with some sort of slow acting epinephrine. And they would probably, if the stakes weren't too high, at least in terms of ratings, I would have expected her to probably be down the immediately the immediate days afterwards, but they're going to probably stroll her out, and she'll be on the TV for maybe a day or so afterwards, and then the next three days she'll probably disappear off the face of the earth like she usually does. Sure, sure. So, I mean, that's why they have had to cancel her events is to get her all drugged up, ready, resting, and then try to get her back up and hope she doesn't fall apart. But just then she's not preparing. Then she's not getting ready. Then she's nervous about what of the seizures come back, and then, and then that's going to make her basically choke up on screen. I think there's a good chance she's going to basically have to pull out of the debate or f basically uh, start stumbling around during it. I mean, oh, here's a question. What happens if she has a convulsion during the debate? Well, I think that they're going to they're going to pull their little, you know, smoke and mirrors tricks again and try to downplay it and say, oh, you know what? She was just, you know, she tripped over a shoe or it's, it's common to get nervous during these debates or some sort of stupid narrative like that. And everybody at this point, everybody that's paying attention is, is finally, you know, wise enough to kind of see through it. So I'm thankful to see a lot of progress. Sure. Let me It'll ask you this. We're going to come back and play the short report and then go right back to Anthony and uh, others that are patiently holding like Shane and John and Rick. Toll free number to join us is 800 259 on this subject. But now the phones are open on any other subjects as well. What about a false flag? What type of October surprise do you think uh, Obama and Hillary and George Soros might pull? Well, you have these these New York things. You got this Charlotte thing that's going on today. I think that they're gonna, you know, there's probably gonna be another two or three stories about all kinds of unrest and in the press. Oh yeah, we've always sort. said that that have a big race riot right before the election was one of the main things they could do, and it's uh, pretty much starting up right now with the media hyping all these unfortunate events up. My gut tells me that's probably the most likely scenario if they're going to try to weasel their way out of this debate. Well, they could also have a terror attack. It's in New York. They know they brought the sleeper cells in. That could try to do it. Who knows, Carl? Hey, here's one thing. We're going to find out. Oh, yeah. What do you think about folks that say, you know, in the headlines, 
Westerners are the most bored they've ever been. How could you be bored right now? This is an incredible time. Oh, my goodness. You know, it's just people, like I said, the sports aren't doing it. They, You know, the, the, the dead culture is not doing it. People are finally starting to come around and pay attention to things that are impacting their lives. And they don't like it. And like I said, the stakes are high. They're going to try to fake it through this. You know, they're going to try to make it through this debate. If not, they're going to, you know, wave something else in front of everybody's faces. But, yeah, I think that that's a load of, you know, garbage that they're saying that everybody's bored over here. No, people are finally starting to pay attention. and they want I agree. To There's a huge awakening taking place in InfoWars and Trump and everything is just a manifestation of that. Thank you, Carl. Stay with us. We are going back to your phone calls here in a few minutes. The toll-free number to join us on this live Wednesday global edition is 800-259-9231. Coming up on Monday, we're going to be live for four hours at least from 7 Central for the first hour before the live debate for 90 minutes that starts at 8 o'clock Central to 9.30 Central between Hillary Rodham Clinton and Donald J. Trump uh, in New York at a major university. And this debate is being put out by the university. It, it's being hosted uh, by an NBC reporter who, despite the fact he's attacked me many times, I still still like the guy. I still like watching the reporter. He kind of just liked the guy and how he reports, uh, even though even though he doesn't, doesn't like me. Uh, so that's coming up. But it's not an NBC debate. Uh, it, is, it is being hosted by one of their moderators. So it's basically open everywhere. Uh, anybody can go out and subscribe to one of the cameras and services that is there. We're doing that. We're going to have reporters there as well. Uh, so it, it, it won't be like where I'm playing the last MSNBC debate and then talking over 90% of it because we have to do that to give analysis and commentary. That's how we're able to take it and carry it. I started doing that last election now. Glenn Beck does it. The Young Turks do it. Basically, everybody else does it. I'm not bragging, but we did trailblaze that. Now they're basically having this first real debate the right way where it's just put out by an organization like League of Women Voters or a university uh, or you know another group. A city or a state should host it. And then just here's the feed, bring your cameras, put it out. They're like, well, the production has to all be super slick and boom cameras and all this crap. No, a bunch of cameras at people, jack into an audio feed, and let's get this party started. That's the way it's supposed to be. And more and more, that's happening. So I'm very excited about this. By the way, I'm also excited about our new free app that has video feeds, audio feeds, um, special reports. It's going to have exclusive feeds soon. It's already got the function, but I'm going to be launching them in the next few weeks. Uh, Infowars.com forward slash app. Infowars.com forward slash app. Or go to the Apple Store or go to the Google Play Store. It's already number 30 in the free apps section. Right behind, two points behind, two places behind, Xbox. A couple places ahead of Google. Google Video Play. Think about that. Uh, so two days in, this app is even bigger than I thought it would be. It's absolutely free. Infowars.com forward slash app. And what I'm asking you to do is send Infowars.com forward slash app, that link to your friends, your family, mass text them. People don't really open emails like they open text. Load it into your phone, do a mass text, and say, hey, an independent, pro-America, pro-sovereignty, pro-prosperity, pro-Second Amendment news organization that already reaches 30 million people a week has launched a free app that's already amazing. I mean, people don't put out free apps like this. That's why it's already rising. I mean... It'll probably be in the top 10 in a week at this rate, they're saying. It might go to number one, folks, and this is unheard of, because we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. People don't do that. They spend, you know, $5,000 and put out a free app that has, you know, an audio feed and a, and a, you know, list of articles. That's what we've done before with our old app that had over a million downloads, and it's still available and it's great uh, at Infowars.com forward slash show, where you have all the different feeds and live video feeds and other stuff, but Infowars.com forward slash app, is where you can go and then send that link on to others and say, hey, I've downloaded the app. You know, I like it or it's amazing or I hate it, whatever you think of it. Uh, and you should check this out. It's free. See this show four hours a day, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central or 12 noon Eastern to, to 4 p.m. or you know, a, a Mountain or Pacific, whatever time you're in. Tell folks they can simply tune in. And then it's got all these articles and all these other videos and feeds and 
special reports, and this is part of the new media taking over and displacing the old corrupt media. It's already happening. I mean, you don't think the New York Times launches a new app and in two days it's like number 30 in the free apps of all time in the, in the, in the Apple store. No, this is because we really do have millions of people listening every 15 minutes. We really do have 30 million listeners a week. We really do have 5 billion views on YouTube. We really are kicking butt because you are kicking butt. You are the audience that are active. When you watch this debate Monday, it's not like watching some Super Bowl with 80 million viewers and then uh, what do you do? Wear your team's jersey? Pay a bunch of money to be part of something you're not part of? This is your country, your vote, a, a, a populist fighting a globalist. You're on the field with Donald Trump. They're such liars, they probably can't even field their corpse of a candidate. This is history. When you spread a link, that's information war. You get one of your friends, neighbors, colleagues, family, random people, you name it, to download this free app on their Droid or iPhone, you've taken the globalist platform of surveillance and control and taken that weapon away and turned it right back against them. Think about that. Long and hard. It's a beautiful thing. And then now, every day, they tune in a couple times, it's over. Because they're going to hear the unpolished truth. They're going to hear the unvarnished truth. They're going to connect with it. They're going to hear it. Maybe they don't like me. They're going to like Leanne McAdoo or David Knight or Paul Watson or who knows. They'll tune in Michael Savage or Matt Drudge pops in or Ron Paul, and they'll connect with the different crew members and, and, the, and the different ideas, and they'll share information with us and then see it put out to millions. They'll understand what it is to be free and open and real. They'll understand there is a resistance. They'll understand there's a war and they'll click with it because they already knew it was going on, but nobody told them they were right. Every signal was to tell them they were wrong. Get the free app. Super Mel Vitality. I'm extending the sale 20% off. People ask us to. I'm doing it. Great nutraceutical. Great supplement. Just check it out for yourself. Five-star reviews on third-party sites. Uh, the great super high-quality organic Vitamin B12, Secret 12, 20% off, InfoWarsLife.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. All right, I'm going to play this Paul Watson report and then go right back uh, to your calls, Anthony and others that are holding, talking about the debate. Will Hillary Clinton make it? And then we've got the man attack while predicting ISIS attack in New York was basically a prophet. That's coming up. And we've got a bunch of medical news. John Boehner openly sells out to the communist Chinese as if we didn't already know that. All this and more in a police shooting that I think was not justified and is very shameful and the police were just freaking out. This guy's like fixing his stalled car, father of four, no criminal record, a Christian, on his way back from church, I'm told. And the cops freak out on him and say, you know, basically stay there and he does and they just shoot him. You shouldn't hire trigger happy cowards to be cops. And I've seen it for myself. You don't want to hire a bunch of maniacs. And I agree, it's a tough job. And a dangerous job and a rough job. I wouldn't want it. I'd probably turn into a basket case in a year or two. But, man, you just can't gun fathers down for no reason. George Soros is going to jump all over this now. But, hey, this, this happens out there. you got to look at the statistics. But what's happening in the Carolinas? Now, we're, we're trying to look at that. That's definitely racial and people being drug out of their vehicles and attacked because of what color they are because a black cop shot a black guy. We don't know the details there either. But what we do know is they're planning race war on this country, their own emails admit it, George Soros has admit that. They're pushing violent attacks on Hillary, which they'll then blame on yours truly and others, implying I want violence against her. I don't want any violence against Hillary. I actually feel sorry for the demon. But I certainly don't want her to become a martyr. Let's go to Paul Joseph Watson's latest report. The Clintons are like Frank and Claire Underwood on steroids. You have a guy who literally got away with raping women and went on to become president. Bill and Hillary have been directly connected with numerous murders. They've intimidated victims into silence. It would be incredibly naive to put anything past them. With the polls almost at a dead heat, Hillary will contrive and exploit a shocking October surprise in a desperate effort to sink Trump. 
This dirty trick could involve one of two scenarios, maybe even both. Hillary could lean on her allies in the White House to provocateur a major military escalation with Russia, maybe even staging the shootdown of a Russian or American jet. It wouldn't be the first time that such a drastic ploy has been considered. We're already seeing the warning signs for this emerging out of Syria. Hillary will then label Trump anti-American and claim he's in bed with Putin. But the more likely scenario is that you could have a Trump-supporting, MAGA hat-wearing, Pepe the Frog-memeing white supremacist go into a black area and shoot up a school full of children. You could have a group of Trump supporters caught on camera dishing out a brutal beating to an African-American, Rodney King style. And it doesn't have to be a conspiracy or a false flag for this to happen. For nearly a year, the media has pushed the narrative that Donald Trump is, quote, literally Hitler and that his supporters are brown shirt Nazis. Any moment that I have to call Trump out for being uh, an inheritor to Hitler, I will. Not only has that kind of reckless rhetoric emboldened extremists on the left to threaten and plan assassination attempts against Trump, it's also emboldened actual neo-Nazis on the far right to think they can grease the skids for the reincarnation of Adolf Hitler. So don't be surprised if and when one of them goes postal. That's the environment the media and the left has created by equating Trump with Hitler. People wonder why Hillary suddenly started talking about the alt-right. Racist, 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 racist. Why her official campaign website suddenly started obsessing about Pepe the Frog. Why she bizarrely claimed the alt-right was being run by Vladimir Putin. What is she doing? Does she not know the one basic rule that you don't feed the trolls? What she's doing is setting the stage to exploit a military escalation with Russia to embarrass Trump or a violent incident or series of incidents that will be blamed on Trump supporters to demonize Trump. She's creating the narrative in the minds of undecided voters that the alt-right is dangerous, unhinged, and that it's about to violently lash out. Remember, they tried to pull this same stunt before Brexit. Joe Cox, the anti-Brexit leftist, murdered by a racist right-wing Brexiteer. Of course, he actually turned out to be a barely political, mentally unstable person, but that didn't matter. The media sold the narrative. And the media will dismiss everything I just said as another right-wing conspiracy theory, just as they claimed Hillary's ill health was a baseless conspiracy theory. And look how that turned out. We're truly entering wag the dog territory. Either there will be a major escalation with Russia, or we're going to see Trump supporters framed and blamed for violent racist attacks, domestic terror, and murder. Hillary Clinton is completely ruthless. She will resort to anything to become president. Anyone who denies that is dangerously naive. That video is up on Infowars.com. This report needs to get out to everybody right now. It's red linked on Infowars.com. Alert, the October surprise will be a violent provocation blamed on Trump, Paul Joseph Watson. And I want to add this point. For the general public that says, what's all this talk about narratives by the White House and the State Department and the media? They're basically giving you now their internal nomenclature. They're just externalizing their own propaganda. And, 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 uh, and like telling you, Muslims don't commit terror, even though they commit like 99% of it or more. It's like 99.7%. They're telling you that they control reality and you've got to basically say down is up or black is white or 2 plus 2 equals 5 or 10 or 15 if they say so. And they're angry that they know bringing in millions of Muslims into Europe and the United States from war-torn areas that, that, that some of these people are going to start stabbing and bombing and you know, going up and raping women in miniskirts because that's what they do in their country. They just want to use that as a way to then take our rights domestically. They don't want to have that be a big national issue. But Trump creates a real narrative where he comes out and says, there's going to be more terror attacks as you bring more people in from these countries. That's two plus two equals four. They're angry he's doing that narrative. So what Paul Watson is getting at here is that before they do a PR rollout, a false flag, a staged event, or seize on a real event that took place, they prep the ground. They, they get ready for a PR rollout.
And if you're in media and you study this, you learn how to see it. And from a mile away, they're saying people are planning violence against Hillary. Alex Jones wants violence against Hillary. The, the alt media wants violence against Hillary. The alt media are Nazis. The alt media should be arrested. The alt media work for Putin. The alt media, the alt media, and they are hammering this narrative that Donald Trump threatened Hillary. Did you hear? He said she should just give up her bodyguards and see what happens. They didn't give the full quote of if she wants to take your guns, but she's got government paid for bodyguards, let her give up her, her guards and see what happens. Clearly, that means she's being hypocritical, being elitist, having government paid for, citizen paid for bodyguards, but you can't protect yourself in a war-torn area like Chicago or D.C. But they turn that into the narrative by editing it. Did you hear Donald Trump wants to hurt Hillary? So that when they wind up a mental patient, a Sirhan Sirhan or whatever, to go after Hillary, there's an attempt, and it turns out it's a Trump supporter. Now, the truth is, they covered up this guy was an anti-Trumper that reportedly bombed New York and New Jersey. They covered up that his father tried to stop him. They covered up all of this because that doesn't fit into their narrative. Because here's their problem. They're bringing jihadists in. Jihadists don't wait to get orders. They're not totally controlled by the globalists, just like a bag of black widows you put in your neighbor's bed aren't taking orders from you. They're just going to bite your neighbor when they go to sleep at night or putting a rattlesnake in their bed. The same deal. The rattlesnake's not taking orders. You just put it, you know, in their, you know, in the cab of their truck or whatever to bite them, hoping it would. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. You bring in millions of rattlesnakes, you're going to get some people getting bit. Okay. So they gave nerve gas to Al Qaeda, now ISIS, to, to you know, to attack the government. They thought you were so dumb that when they attacked the Syrian government, our media said that the Syrian government had attacked itself. But then it turned out Al Qaeda did videos launching the mortars, Allah Akbar, thank God for the chemical weapons in Arabic. And so that blew up in Obama's face because they're trying to work with a bunch of lunatics who aren't trained spies. Now, you know why they do that? They can't get CIA and FBI people to commit these type of crimes on average. They just can't do it. They create special groups of leftists that will do terror attacks in Oklahoma City, but then the FBI and the local police end up exposing it. I mean, people want to bash the FBI, and I'm not lionizing it, but we, we know all about Oklahoma City because of the FBI and the local police. I mean, FBI agents went public and, and outside of, quote, law, released what happened. Two FBI agents gave an interview to the L.A. Times and told the whole story of what happened. So, and they were told to stand down and let that bombing go forward, and they, they had to, on their conscience, blow the whistle. So that's how we know all this, folks. And we know how they operate. So they, they're having trouble getting the CIA and getting Army officers and other people to go out and stage false flags. So they've got to actually bring them, the, the radical Muslims in to do it, but they're not doing it at the proper time. They're supposed to do it down the road as a sleeper cell army to destabilize the country and link up with Black Lives Matter and other combinations that Soros is openly funding. Just like the Ukraine overthrow. But their, their little minions are so uncontrolled, they're actually doing it on their own. The leadership of ISIS and Al-Qaeda is globalist run, is globalist allied, I should say, not completely run. But at the grassroots level, these bots, these uh, these minions, these these zombie attackers, they're going out on their own and doing it, and so that's why Hillary's unable to contain it. And believe me, she wishes she could. Because those sleeper cells are meant if she loses and then Trump gets in. They're not meant to be activated at this time. They don't want to just bring in a couple million. They want to bring in tens of millions and really conquer us down the road. This is a more long-term plan. But again, when the Saudis gave Al-Qaeda nerve gas, they had to show off their family and had to show off online what rock stars they were. They don't want to meet Hollywood stars. They don't want to, you know, all that stuff. They want to be on YouTube launching a chemical attack. And so, you know, they're just not good soldiers for the New World Order. You can't get the CIA to do it. You can't get, you know, anybody else to do it properly. So now you've got to rely on people that literally come from places so hillbilly, it brings a new term to the word hillbilly. All right, I'm going to go to some more phone calls now. I've got more reports coming up, but let's go to some phone calls right now. Let's talk to Anthony in Florida. Thanks for holding. So will Hillary make the debate next Monday? That's the big question. Well, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you that they will do whatever it takes to either delay or even cancel it because she obviously looks very, very sick 
As a, I agree with you that it's literally right on a weekend at Bernie's, and she even has the sunglasses to go with it. And um, cause like, and I also want to make the point too that if you notice how um, at the uh, September 11th um, at the September 11th memorial service there, the the mo you see literally the moment she falls, you literally see a wall of Secret Service people trying to block. Oh, yeah, out. this is all well rehearsed because this is going on a lot. That's what the Secret Service told us. They said, we're not going to give you secret stuff. Just follow her around with your reporters. Watch them. You know, watch what happens medically, the tents, the ambulances. She's falling down all the time. Just catch it on tape. Well, we did and somebody else did. God bless them. Yeah, exactly. And that, that tape was not supposed to be seen. It was not supposed to be seen. <laughs> Yeah, and look, we don't have the budget. We, you know, we've sent reporters to a couple of her events. They keep hundreds of yards back. Millie Weaver uh, and her camera person were able to get into like thirty yards away and get, you know, her in the medical tent and everything else, and the, uh, the emergency stretchers and her having a medical event. This guy was basically, a, you know, a Democratic supporter. I guess is why he was allowed. Uh, but uh, boy, I tell you, I mean, that really. And again, the mainstream media cut the feed right at the point where she's just wobbling, and then says that we made it up and she fell down. No, she fell down on her face. Three people could barely pick her up, uh, and then her feet are down behind her. And so, again, that's why InfoWars needs financial support. I want to be able to have a, a team of reporters all the time out there when big stories breaks to hound the system and find out what's really happening. Uh, but by the grace of God, citizen journalists everywhere are filling the gap, my friend. Anything else, Anthony? Oh, yes. Um, actually, I was going to say, um, yeah, because um, I, I think that, what do you call she? What do you call with, with Trump? Trump, Trump. Um, I think Trump is going to do very, very well, and because he's obviously a great speaker, and um, yeah, I, I agree with you on on all those points. Thank all you. right, brother. Well, we're going to find out. I mean, we're only how many days? It's uh, Wednesday, so we got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like four and a half days. And I mean, uh, it's like watching paint dry, uh, but, but the opposite. It's like. The paint's frying slowly, but I can't wait to see when it's finally done. I mean, I, it's torture. So tick, 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 tick. You walk into this room, and it's biblical in nature as the Jezebel put forward by the establishment begins to disintegrate right as she's supposedly about to take the throne over America. And all the time discrediting the mainstream media that tried to prop her up. Again, InfoWars will be getting the feed directly uh, from the debate coming up next week because it's going to be a, you know, free to all media. When we're going to have live coverage of it, we won't be talking over the whole thing. When, when one group is running it, if we're going to carry it, we have to then give live commentary basically to 60%, 70% of it, and, and that's how we do it fair use. Uh, but more and more, that model is being broken by our actions and other actions. And so they're going to where basically anybody can subscribe uh, and, and uh, get the raw feed. So we'll be covering that next Monday, uh, an hour before the debate, during the debate, and several hours after the debate with analysis and taking your phone calls. The real thing we're going to do is, um, I, and I'll be here f uh, the whole time, is we're going to sit there with Hillary's lies and already knowing her main agenda with videos showing her lies and articles showing her lies with lots of quick clips so that as soon as the debate's over, we'll have all that lined up to show you or as soon as she collapses or doesn't come out of the bathroom or whatever, we'll have the video with quick commentary up, boom, 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 to a page with highlights like instant replay as it's happening. And nobody else is going to do that. They're going to wait and watch during the debate and do it after. We're going to be doing it during it. That's the real game changer. I predict 20 million views just doing that. And people are like, why are you telling us your secrets? I've known all this stuff forever and never implemented it. I haven't had the crew or the people. We're doing it with the skeleton crew. I want you to do it too. That's what this is all about. I'm not in competition with people. It's like a disease of like, oh my gosh, Breitbart might cover it live or, or Drudge will have a link to it. I, I'm the one. I'm the one with the feed. I'm, I'm not battling about who has the feed. I'm battling about the globalists wanting to take my guns, dumb me down, conquer humanity, put in driverless cars, phase humans out in their own words for a post-industrial world. That's the big diabolical plan. That's what we're exposing. That's what we're saying no to. That's what we're doing. I'll get my info out any way I can. I get calls all the time from talk shows around the country, TV, radio, and they go, can we use some of the clips from your show in our intro? And I go, of course you can. Don't ask me. It's fair use anyways. I'm a public figure. I'm well known. 
in not going after people, not territorializing things, not infighting. But I'll get calls like, our business wants to put up a billboard with InfoWars.com or the local station you're on. Is that okay? You have, yes, but you don't need my uh, permission to put up a link to my website. Thank you. You don't need my permission to put up a billboard for the local radio station. Call them and see you know, if they've got any input on how to help you. But people are so timid. And we have to be bold in this fight. Now, I'm going to go back to your calls, uh, Shane in Oregon and others here in just a moment. But first, man attacked while predicting ISIS attack was a prophet. The story is up on Infowars.com. In fact, I wanted to get the date on this, and I guess I never did. Can you guys pull up the article itself? And, and I can actually give folks, you know, but see, that headline is today when we posted it. What I need to do is go to the video below it and click on it. And then I can give the YouTube date, and then that was uploaded live that day. So just go to that video for me. Thank you. Go to the page. Again, I'm not bitching at the crew. I just something I forgot to do. Uh, and so this was uh, April 14th, 2016. Oh, I get it. That was just a couple months ago. So a couple months ago, this fellow, we don't know his name, he's out there warning people that there's going to be an ISIS terror attack. Because we know, I said that inside the, quote, refugees, that they're shipping in their fighters. We know 80% of them are military-age men. Now, the State Department, we played it earlier, has been forced to admit that that's currently happening. And this poor guy was out there with a bunch of white liberals and, and a bunch of uh, Black Lives Matter people. And they ended up physically, viciously assaulting him. It's a nine-minute video. We're going to play it here in just a moment, parts of it. But the guy is simply out there with a Make America Great Again hat, explaining that Trump is right about not letting radical jihadists in who are completely unvetted. And he finally goes ahead and gets attacked because the media and the system has taught everybody white people are evil and inherently bad, unless you're a white person denouncing yourself as evil. Okay? And then they indiscriminately get bombed, and the New Yorkers are so dumbed down, they don't even know what's happened to them. So this is very, very sad. The video is up on Infowars.com. Over four months ago, well, I guess that's your point as it was on the article, uh, this patriot was wearing a New Yorkers, uh, was warning New Yorkers about the threat of ISIS attacks on U.S. soil and that Americans should arm themselves to be protected against the Islamic terrorist organization. He was then attacked by BLM in New York City. And again, I saw a liberal white trendy lady today the Black Lives Matter bumper sticker on her car. The first time I saw it, I even shot some video of her, pulled up beside her to see what she looked like. And she looked like a total prisoner of the cult that is political correctness. And literally thinks the number one issue in the world is, I don't know, there's a hundred and something people killed a year by police that were illegitimate shootings. But let's just say it's higher than that, a couple hundred. That is not even a blip on the radar screen. Now you can take a story like Tulsa police shooting uh, this uh, poor uh, Terrence Crutcher to death, and you see the video, his car's broke down, they pull up, the cops freak out on him, he puts his hands up and they shoot him. They put social justice warrior, trendy wimps, in his police that are so scared, they'll shoot anything moving. And they're statistically even more likely to shoot whites, because I guess they think they won't get in trouble doing that. So there are some trigger-happy loons out there, Okay. And I've got a problem with it. They should pay this guy's, you know, family $10 million. I mean, you know, and these cops should get in trouble, get fired, get put in prison, whatever. Uh, but uh, five days ago, Tulsa police officer, Betty Shelby, a 40-year shot, a 40-year-old uh, unarmed black man after his car was found abandoned in the middle of the road. Federal, state, and local authorities have launched investigations into the officer-involved shooting. Tiffany... Uh, Crutcher, Terrence's twin sister, had urged prosecutors to immediately press charges against Shelby, a five-year veteran with the Tulsa police. Earlier this week, Tulsa police released a video and audio recordings of the shooting. Since that happened, though, attorneys for both the Crutcher family and Shelby have laid out conflicting accounts about what happened on the night of September 16th. Well, there's video of it. Hands up, refusing commands. Was Crutcher high? Open versus closed. It goes on and on. The point is, 
because we have helicopter video of it, and the guy's standing there. He's not rushing him. They kill him. And if you're so scared, you think a guy standing there who isn't attacking you or isn't making a move, and you got to shoot him because his car's broke down the middle of the road, uh, it's crazy. And let me tell you, it's scary when cops pull people over, pull you over, and you see how scared they are when they're coming up to your car. And I get it. It's a dangerous job. I mean, okay, I understand. You've got adrenaline. I understand people are trying to kill you, especially with Black Lives Matter and George Soros saying basically kill cops, which only makes it worse for black people especially. And then the police, what really kills a lot of black people and other people for that matter, uh, other human beings on this planet, is the police are slow rolling into all these dangerous neighborhoods because they don't want to get blamed or shot or killed. And so it's all a disaster. And the point is it's being exacerbated, it's being manipulated, it's being made worse by outside forces that want to take all of our anger at the corrupt government and make it all about local cops and a hundred and something innocent people they kill a year. The cops have stopped showing up in dangerous areas of Chicago and the first nine months of this year now, they've gone from 300 and something blacks being shot on average in nine months to close to a thousand. It's like 1,400 total now. I mean, it is cr hundreds and hundreds and hundreds dying. But, but see, it's okay if a black person kills another black person. It's bad if a white cop does it. But I want to know what's going on with the situation, obviously, in the Carolinas, because that's a black cop doing that. So August was the most violent month in Chicago in 20 years. And it's not getting any better as things supposedly cool off into September. All right, let's go ahead and play this clip. Man attacked while predicting ISIS attack was a prophet. And, and, and watching the video, I'll narrate it for radio listeners. He's just out there politely warning people, you know, street preaching. And folks build themselves up and then start beating the hell out of him. And... It's just like watching videos or films of like weird clan people grabbing somebody and winding themselves up. But see, it's okay because, quote, they're minority. So it's okay to get all wound up and attack the First Amendment of a guy simply trying to warn you. And I tell you, if these black New Yorkers went to Libya, the Wahhabists say that black people are slaves and are not human. That's actually where that teaching came from. They started the slave trade on blacks. And... In the Quran, blacks are bad mouth. So I don't, and I'm not attacking black Muslims. I, I don't do that. I just don't get why it's the cool, in, sexy, avant-garde thing and why people don't know their own history or, or what really went on. So, if, you know, if these black folks in New York got sent to Libya, they'd be killed by the Al-Qaeda slash ISIS groups that are killing every black person they can get their hands on because they're claiming they have no right to be in North Africa. Even if they're Muslim, they're killed because they're black. So I want to understand that little tidbit as well. Uh, just the absolute ignorance. Let's go ahead and play it. ISIS is here. Learn how to protect yourself. Learn how to protect your family. Learn how to shoot a firearm safely. But little liberal trendies laughing here, at him. You know, they watch ISIS HBO. Is here. They're Wake cool. up. Wake up. Wake up. Learn how to defend yourself. Learn Wait till those yuppies have lost everything they got. Learn how to defend your family. Trendies think if you go along with the establishment, you're a winner. No, you're a loser. That's why they're making trendy culture about being poor and living in a 200-square-foot apartment that you pay more for than a 1,000-foot apartment. And they're making all the new apartments all over without car parking spaces. Trendies like it because they're in the cool club. They're called followers. And then that liberal rights start really celebrating and the minorities or the majority Start beating up the demon white. But it's okay. He's wearing a red hat. He's a white guy. Go home. You have no speech. Go back to North Korea. Donald Trump racist, which means doesn't submit to me and my racism. Doesn't roll over to me demanding everything free. This is gang psychology, folks. As long as they say KKK, they can beat him up. But I haven't had this guy on. I don't know who he is. Just get him on if he's a listener. I bet he's a listener. I bet he's a kind of a right-wing Christian guy. Probably real pro-Israel. I love how the guy starts bumping into him, but his hands are up. 
That's the mind control. He's pushing into him. He's pushing him out. But it's okay because this is a white devil. But, but it's all right because his hands are up. See, he's running into him, but his hands are up, so it's okay. So the guy finally pushes him off, and then now, oh, they, they assaulted him, but they didn't. And now they can start attacking him. And then they start punching him. But look, oh, we have a social justice warrior, a little white twit who hates mommy and daddy. But we're not attacking. They always hold their hands up, then they hit you. Oh, we, we hit you, but our hands are up. It's all about language, all about they control symbols. They control everything. They control everything. So they come and they run into you, just like the anti-pro-lifer uh, people that run into people in wheelchairs and crutches and then, and then say, oh, excuse me, why'd you assault me? Then they try to file charges. They start slapping him and hitting him in the head. The full video is up on Infowars.com for going to New York to warn them. Man who, you know, man who, man warns New Yorkers of ISIS threat is beat up. And it goes on. And the brutal part's coming up. You can go see it. But it's all these wimps, all these social justice warriors and chicken-necked white people getting off on the fun of going out and finding a KKK, even though he's not a KKK, and beating him. And, and they're like, oh, this is really fun. Oh, oh, there was a terror attack. ISIS, that's the group that has literally nothing to do with Islam. Shane in Oregon, thanks for holding my friend. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Alex? Thank you for taking my call. Thank you, brother. Hey, uh, man, I, I'm all over the board. I got so much uh, I want to say, but let me just I know the feeling. On a couple things. First, first of all, I'm a 13 year veteran of the United States Army. Uh, I uh, I got the nutraceuticals, things that I can get right now, and I'm telling you, I absolutely love them. Um, I, I currently have the liver cleanse and liver shield. Uh, B12, and the uh, Super Male Vitality and X2 Nation Iodine. Well, thank um, you, sir, because they're great products. They're game changers. But regardless, you're funding our operation. So, again, it's a total win-win. You are the info war. Thank you for the support. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, you know, I, I listen to you every day. Uh, I have a fairly easy job. I am a disabled veteran. Um, but uh, my job is basically uh, I drive all day long. And uh, for about 10 hours. So I'm streaming, listening to you. Uh, I can't wait till 9 o'clock in the morning when you come on the radio. Uh, I listen through the app and I listen up until the end. And then after your show's over, after the fourth hour, I go into, uh, you know, um, other videos and things that you have. It's endless amounts of things that I can watch. And I, I really, really appreciate it. I can't explain how enough uh, important it is. To well, sir, it. well, thank it's God you care. Thank God you're involved. Please pass the videos on. Wake up other people. Tell folks about the new free app that's even better than the old app, which is still great. Infowars.com forward slash app, because that's the next level of spreading the word, which I bet you're already doing. Yes, definitely. I sent uh, I sent the new the new uh, app out in a mass text uh, through most of everybody in my... Well, contact. it's having an effect. It's it's going to be number one, I guess, soon. It's like number 30 on, on the iTunes store right now. Well, you know, and, and it should be because uh, people are waking up. I have friends in law enforcement. I have uh, military friends. Everybody's waking up and really starting to see what's truthfully going on out there. And, um, you know, one of my concerns with Hillary is uh, I'm not only am I concerned that she's not going to make it to somehow make it to this debate, which, you know, I think that's all by design. She's not going to make it to this debate. But uh, I think they're going to wait to the last couple of weeks. Uh, right up to the election and actually pull her out and try to postpone the elections is my concern. I, I tell you, I, I, I mean, I agree with you. I think all that's in the cards. We're seeing things that have never before been done. We got 47 days left. Who do you think they'll try to put in? Kane, Biden, uh, Bernie Sanders? Well, you may think this is silly, but uh, what if they tried to put Michelle Obama in there? That's what, uh, actually, Roger Stone is always so on target. He says that's the word. They're actually floating that around in D.C. right now. I mean, I, the reason I, I, I think that is because, uh, you know, the, it would still be a woman on the card uh, as as zombified as, as the followers are for uh, Hillary. You know, I think they would they would identify, cross-identify uh, Michelle Obama with Hillary and just simply vote for her because, well, she's already in there. She's, you know, kind of she's in that whole sect of, of people. And that's just kind of why I think that. But. Scary a lot time. of folks think that. God bless you, sir, and God bless you for what you've done for this republic. Shane, we appreciate you. We're going to go to break and come back with uh, who's been holding longest, Rick, and then uh, Adam, Maggie, Dave, and others. And then 
who's coming in to take over in the fourth hour. David Knight, always fiery, always focused, always on target. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. And yes, the new app is free. It's InfoWars Live on Droid and on iPhone devices. Taking their little devices and making them do something good. I've got a whole other question pertaining to Hillary. I mean, the establishment tends to just take crises that are already there and exacerbate it and pose as saviors and get more power on and on and on, never taking responsibility for the terrible job they do and calling themselves geniuses. So it really adds to this sycophantic culture of nincompoops that we have running things. I mean, we've had a lot more serious hardcore elites before. So part of the good news is this elite is so out of control, they can be defeated. But they can make big mistakes that cause a nuclear war. So it's almost, it's almost the worst scenario in a way. It's a ticking time bomb. But did they really ever think Hillary could just get into office even though she was so sick? They, that, that, that they could cover up the fact that she's collapsing all the time? I mean, I'm talking every hour or more. Did they really think they could do all this? And now they think they can send her to a debate and just hope she doesn't fall out during the debate? Or do they already have some contingency plan for that? You bet your bottom dollar they do. But it just goes to the recklessness of these people. That's what I'm getting at. Rick in North Carolina, thanks for calling in today. You're on the air. Uh, what do you think is going to happen coming up uh, on November 8th, now 47 days out? Well, uh, your guess is as good as mine in between there. I mean, if you just go to YouTube, uh, you can see that she's behind green screens with everything she does. It's uh, pretty obvious. You'd think that was all the money. She has to uh, get someone that knows what they're doing. By the way, I, so the more, I, I, I mean, I tend to agree with you. This is a new thing where she keeps standing with a jet behind her. It's always the same image, the same airport. Uh, and then she's disappeared. I mean, I, I don't know what the hell's going on with her. Hell, this media is so corrupt, she could die. And they could put a body double in office and cover it up. And then write books about it a decade later saying it was patriotic. I mean, these people are nuts. I mean, if they'll lie about everything else, what's to stop them? That's a great point, Rick. Well, the more I research, read Drudge, and listen to you guys, it's obvious uh, that there's no end in sight for this rabbit hole. Uh, so I'm kind of, as much as I don't want to think about it, and I hope that Trump gets in, we can at least get some breathing room for a little bit. Uh, that would be ideal. I agree. Uh, I, ca I call him breathing room. I agree. Just get off our back for a minute. Just just don't be out to get us, okay? Just go ahead. Before, you know, the Internet gets cut off on the 1st, or, you know, if we can't stop that somehow, you know, what's November 9th going to look like, you know, before we can... That's the question. I think, you know, as much as I'm hoping for the best, I think. Well, uh, let me let me let me say this. because I want your view on it. but It sounds like you're asking a question. To be clear, the Internet's global. The United States and England built it. The control of the DNS numbers and the web addresses is being handed to the U.N. So is regulatory control. They admit they want to censor us. It'll take a month to even phase in the next phase. But they're already kind of doing it ahead of the handover. Okay, so I've done shows on that and broken that down, but it will be incremental. But you won't recognize the Internet in a year from now if we don't turn this around. That's why we need a President Trump. He says he'll come in and take back control of the DNS servers. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, you know, I, I can't really speak to that. Uh, I, I I just think that she's, she straight up said that she's going to censor you guys, Breitbart, all that stuff. I believe it. I have no reason to not believe it. You know, whether it's going to take a month, two months, a year, I'm not sure. Uh, but well, it also has to be like whack-a-mole. If, if we get into the situation they're censoring us, take our articles, our videos, wherever they show up, copy them, spread them even more, uh, give them names that don't match up with what it is. You'll find that when they really try to censor, it'll only make us that much hotter. Yeah. I'm just curious if, if we wake up on the ninth to a Hillary uh, presidency, you know, I'm I'm kind of curious about what the people in between us and them are going to do, the military, the police, to what extent, you know, they're awake. It'd be nice to uh, maybe have Bongino again. Uh, maybe well, I mean, sure. Back. I mean, all I can tell you is they've been leaking information at a level we've never before seen. And again, I'm not saying our police and military are perfect, but they're sure as hell not Hillary Clinton. And they are freaked out. And they're asking us, what should we do? I mean, we're looking at a foreign occupation. Hillary represents a foreign globalist takeover. I mean, that's not rhetoric. She is a foreign multinational agent of the communist Chinese bare minimum. I mean, this is a takeover. IRS impeachment hearings. The former head of the IRS, the current head, uh, David Knight's going to be covering that coming up. Also, the race war prep they're pushing. Uh, in Charlotte and other areas, he's going to be breaking that down.
uh, if I was him, I'd get back into Obama calling for global government yesterday. I played it the first hour and, and, and saying we have to give up our sovereignty, uh, you know, to get with the times. Uh, boy, talk about advertising for a job as the head of the U.N. Uh, so much more nightly news tonight. Seven o'clock central infowars.com forward slash show to find all the details. Uh, the nightly news is subscriber people to see it first. Five ninety five a month. Twenty people can use the same username and passcodes. We have our own platform that's harder to censor. And then the next day, we put up about 90% of the material on YouTube and other platforms. But the point is, is we have to have our own platform. And so people that are members are paying it forward. They are. People say, well, why should I pay if it's free? That's the whole point. It's an honor to pay to have it in higher quality, first, live, special reports, all my films, so much more. And then help us put it out for free to wake people up. It's a war. I know most of you get that, but some of you don't. We need your prayers. We need you to spread the links. We need you to buy the products. They're great products to begin with because this is how we build our own economy, the global stone control. 20% off Secret 12, incredible vitamin B12. Take it under the tongue right now. 20% off for male vitality. I'm extending that and super female vitality. 888-253-3139 is the toll free number to call. If you'd like to order over the phone or InfoWarsLife.com for the nutraceuticals. InfoWars. Store.com is the umbrella site where you find the thousands of items. Um, wow. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to uh, Maggie and then Cindy. Maggie in Georgia, thanks for calling. Hey, am I on? Yes, ma'am. Thanks for holding. Oh, that's awesome. What's up, Alex Jones? Okay, so I was calling about the, um, the Hillary thing. So I think that, um, you know that pneumonia that they made up just for her? Mm -hmm. I think it's going to come back, and this time it'll magically flip-flop back to contagious. So she'll have to call in. Like if it goes through, if the debate happens, I think that's what's gonna that's what's gonna happen. I don't think she'll physically be there. Well, that's 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 certainly in the cards. That's the last lie they pulled. I mean, she's been having these problems for years. It's clearly not pneumonia. I just don't see how she can be there when she can't stand up for a ninety minute debate. What do you think? See, I would think that the more nervous you are, like yeah, that it would be kind of impossible to like the symptoms would get worse. I think that's just kind of how it works, isn't it? You know, like I mean, I'm not a neurologist, but I know that stress is associated with uh, when you have epileptic or uh, different neurological problems associated with convulsions. That it's a big contributor. Yes. Yes, but it is very scary because um, I mean, I hope it's something like that versus something like you're talking about, like false flag or anything like that, because. I mean, it's kind of scary because I don't really, I wouldn't put anything past these people. Boy, I know this, 47 days out from the election and all hell's breaking loose worldwide. And we're all in this together. Maggie, God bless you. Take care. I want to ask every listener, spread the word about the broadcast. People are ready to be woken up right now. And the censorship's coming in and the global government's being announced. And Obama's announcing we got to join the New World Order and because it's liberal. He said, quote, liberal New World Order. People are ready to hear the truth now. And I want to commend those fighting in the wilderness for decades, but now is the time to put all sail on, you know, to, you know on these masks and go as fast as we can. Uh, let's talk to Cindy in the PA. We got about a minute and a half. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, Alex. Um, I just think it's ironic they're having this during a Monday night football game. And yeah, well, I they hope that would that compete with it, but instead, it doesn't matter. It's, it's going to hurt the stupid football instead. Go ahead. But what if they were to have a false flag event at the football game? Um, nerve gas, a bomb, like these jihadis, something go off, and they have to break away from the debates to go cover the football game. Um, yeah, canceling like, the debate. Um, uh, no, I agree. That is exactly the type of crap they could pull. And here's the deal. We're about to find out. Good point, yeah, Cindy. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, um, one other thing. I've been a Prison Planet subscriber for years and years. Thank you. And they've been knocking you off streams left and right for the last month. I used to get you on four streams. Now I can only get you on pop-up. They've knocked you out on one, two, three, and four. Well, ma'am, we'll investigate that. Anytime there's a problem with it, we'll work on it. Thank you all for your support. God bless you. Sorry, i got to cut you short. David Knight is coming up. Out of the gate. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. On this fourth hour, I'm David Knight. We're going to continue taking the calls, especially the people who have been hanging on here for a while. Uh, Dave in Pennsylvania, David in Pennsylvania, two different people from Pennsylvania, and Adam in New York. Uh, stay with us. I'm going to get to you as soon as I tell people what's coming up this fourth hour, because we have a lot of news. You will not believe what they have done in New York with the person who's been charged with terrorism. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the... Uh, hearings today on Capitol Hill, 
about impeaching the IRS commissioner. We're going to also talk about the Syrian bombings. Now, you've heard a lot about the Syrian bombing of a relief convoy, but you haven't heard much about what happened over the weekend. And I think that's very, very interesting. Now, I talked about it uh, Monday night on the nightly news. We had a caller talk about it uh, on the fourth hour on Monday. Uh, we're going to talk about what happened there. We're going to talk about the ceasefire. And we're going to talk about Hillary Clinton's campaign having an Aleppo moment, just like Gary Johnson. And when we talk about how weak Hillary is, we got to remember, you know, just as last week, they were going on and on about Pepe the Frog, the cartoon character. That was the central focus of the Hillary Clinton campaign because they don't have anything to talk about. The lady is an obvious liar and a crook. She has no accomplishments that are positive. And uh, so this week it's all about Skittles. Now they are attacking uh, Donald Trump Jr. for a tweet that he put out on Skittles. And we're talking about the absolute absurd uh, issues that they're bringing up with the Skittles stuff. He was fundamentally right, and we're going to tell you why when we get back to that. But I want to go first to our callers who've been holding for a long time. Let's go to Adam in New York. Adam? Hi, David. Hey, thank you for holding. Go ahead. Hey, um, just wanted to talk really quick about the debates. I don't think currently with everything that's going on, I don't think Hillary's going to make it unless something happens to where, you know, there's something that she can blame on Trump currently with the optics that she has to use a Roger Stone term. <laughs> you know, um, talk about optics. I mean, what what about her eyes uh, <laughs> going in different directions? I mean, you know, people joke about these uh, elitists being lizards or whatever. I mean, she is turning full blown Madagascar chameleon. Okay, with the eyes moving in different directions. I tweeted out yesterday. Uh, my my son actually came up with it. Uh, Lance said uh, Hillary for prism, and uh, <laughs> she had those prism glasses. Uh, but anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, you don't think she's going to make it to the debates? The only way she, she'll be there, unless she has something to grill him on, they can turn something. Like, you've already seen it with the bombings, how, you know, they try to turn it on Trump and try to say, oh, it's Trump, he's a ISIS recruiter, and, and they try to blame it. They'll, they'll try to make that Trump-Putin connection. <laughs> Trump Putin. Uh, huh? <laughs> they've, con they've conflated the two of them so much together that they've become one entity in the minds of the uh, Democrats. Trump Putin. <laughs> Just one word yeah. there. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So it, it, and then if she actually is there, if things go bad, I think a uh, previous caller alluded to it. I think they'll have a some sort of false flag, something already in the can, some sort of catastrophe that they can literally, like they're cutting to a commercial, um, just bring that up and if things start to look bad for Hillary. Yeah, I, I can't see with her wiping her schedule for an entire six days. Okay, she's cleaned out her schedule to prepare for this debate is, is what she's saying. Of course, it's, it's trying to rest up and prepare physically. I can't see her not showing up. The only way that I would see this not happening is if they stage some kind of a false flag and say, well, you know, because of all this, this happened, we can't have the debate. Uh, I, I think she's going to be under a lot of pressure. I think it's going to be so damaging to her if she uh, doesn't show up to the debate that it's going to be a major, major loss for her. Uh, that's the thing. Donald Trump isn't going to just say, well, gee, I'm, I'm really sorry she couldn't show up. He's going to hammer her with the fact that she's unable to even uh, sit there or stand there for a debate. Uh, I, I don't really see how she can uh, can get away with that. I just want to add really quick. I think uh, just about her health, something that uh, not a lot of people have talked about, I think there's a spiritual component there. Um, you know, I don't know what it is. It's almost as if she's kind of sold her soul in a crossroads deal or something, and, and now <laughs> she's kind of paying the price with everything that uh, we see her going through. She signed that Faustian bargain, bargain and she didn't look at the expiration date. <laughs> yeah, now her, just now her a contract, little bit expired, just a little bit before the election, didn't it? <laughs> yep, her contract's just about up. That's right. So yeah, there's other people there different. said, you know, maybe we ought to have uh, Rand Paul look at her, and, and, and I said, yeah, he's an ophthalmologist. Uh, if anybody could fix that problem or take a look at it and say, you know, it's a neurological issue. Uh, he could, but I said, no, her real issue, her real issue is a character problem. It's really a soul problem, as you point out. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for holding. Let's go to Dave in Pennsylvania. Dave, go ahead. Am I on, Dave? Uh, Dave in Pennsylvania, yeah. We've got a couple of different Daves, but this is Dave. We've got a David, but this yeah. is Dave. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Dave. Okay, go ahead, Dave. Thanks for Okay, holding. yeah, here's what I think is going to happen. I don't think it really matters if she goes or not, because I really think they're going to hologram her. And because they've already backplanned 
everything that they're doing. If you could see that they're letting all the refugees in, the places that they're placing them around the country pretty much match up with the places that were leveraged by the money that we got from China. And what I think they're going to do is, they already said, you know, North Korea got, you know, backpack nukes. Why wouldn't they go ahead and blow that up? They yeah. leveraged the money already. Well, I wouldn't be surprised around. if there's a false flag, but I don't think they're going to be able to get away with something like a hologram. <laughs> Clearly, Donald Trump would have something to say about that. It's like, uh, Hillary... You are the most transparent I have ever seen you. <laughs> She's not been transparent. Actually, she is. She is, perhaps, uh, she and Obama are the most transparently criminal people we have ever had in government. Uh, most transparent liars we've ever had. Uh, thank you so much, Dave. Let's go to uh, David in Pennsylvania. Go ahead, David. Yes, uh, you're doing a fine job there today. And uh, I was going to tell you, did you know that Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton's families are, are originally from the Scranton, Pennsylvania area? I knew that about uh, Biden, yeah. And well, Hillary Clinton is up in that area, too, and I, I got an idea that after Trump landslides her in the, the November election, she then next year could run for the mayor of the city of Scranton. There you go. <laughs> uh, do you think she could get elected she, dog catcher in Pennsylvania she, after shutting down all the coal mines? Steamtown, and the reason why they call it Steamtown is because the politicians up there are full of hot air. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I don't know if she could get elected dog catcher. If, if they come in and they, the two of them say we're going to completely shut down entire industries, they have absolute contempt for the American people. They not only want to replace our industries, they want to replace the American people. People in Germany have called it what it is, the great people replacement. We've seen this happen. Uh, as a matter of fact, in Germany, uh, they, they referred to uh, uh, a, uh, a famous quote in Germany. Uh, from Bertolt Breck. He was very disillusioned with the East German communists when they physically attacked workers who were striking for higher wages. It's like, come on, this is communism. You know, we should have a uh, $15 an hour minimum wage, right? <laughs> like Hillary and Bernie are pushing. So they were very disillusioned, and uh, uh, Brecht was uh, disillusioned with that. And he says, well, uh, we tried to change the government. Perhaps the government has decided that it is easier to replace the people. What is going on right now in the West is the great people replacement. They want to have compliant people who see the government as their benefactor, as their savior. Uh, precisely the sort of things that uh, authoritarian governments have always wanted from the beginning of time. Plato's Republic. He wanted to make sure that nobody knew who their parents were. So he promoted a kind of over-the-top uh, hedonism and prom promiscuity so that nobody even knew who their physical parents were. He wanted the state to be the parent. He wanted them to have no loyalty to any institution, especially the family. No institution other than the government. And that's what we see with our government. That's why they're so focused on giving free education, bringing in as many children as they can, anchor babies and so forth. And why they want to open up the borders to everyone in the world to come here. I mean, quite frankly, at what point does open borders and massive immigration that is totally uncontrolled in terms of numbers, in terms of who comes here, uh, in terms of not being able to vet criminals, at what point does that become an invasion? I mean, why did we have the Cold War? I mean, the Russians and especially the Chinese, if they wanted to, they just could have walked into Texas in massive numbers and started uh, voting for Chairman Mao for President of the United States. They didn't need to fight a, fight a Cold War or uh, set up a Cold War, or even have a, a hot war to try to take over a country. You just walk in and take it over with people. To say, we're here now, and we're going to vote. We're not citizens, but we're going to vote. We're going to uh, have you give us money. We're going to take your jobs in the meantime. Uh, that is the issue. It is an invasion when it is not controlled, when you have absolutely no control, when you don't know who's coming in, when you are going to let in people who not only are hostile to your way of life, to your legal structure. I mean, these people coming in from the Middle East, many of them want Sharia law. You don't believe that? Look at the polls in France. A quarter of the women there want Sharia law. They want to have the burqa. They want to set up a theocracy. All these liberals who are so diligent about rubbing out every expression of religion, every exercise of religion anywhere in the country. They even have a society uh, for uh, it's, it's um, uh, against the uh, uh, freedom of religion. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's the expression of religion that is protected in the First Amendment. We specifically wanted a 
government that would not attack people on the basis of what religion they were. And yet the Muslims want exactly the opposite. You can see what happens in our close ally, Saudi Arabia. The people that Hillary goes to for money. The schools that she goes to to tell them, hey, not everybody in America wears a bikini. Uh, we understand what you guys are about. Soliciting money, soliciting support from these people. We know what Sharia is about. We know that Khan, Sharia Khan, I call him, the man that she had speak before she took the nomination. We know that he is promoting Sharia law. It is antithetical to everything this country stands for. They're trying to set up a theocracy with their religion. And so when people come here and they want to overthrow your legal structure, when they want to overthrow the Bill of Rights, why do we allow that? It's an invasion. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We're going to cover some information about the IRS impeachment hearings. It's absolutely amazing when you stop and think about the fact that Nixon was impeached, but now we can't even impeach the minions who did her doing what he attempted to do and didn't even get started doing. We had an IRS commissioner at that time that shut it down. But before I get to the news on that, I'm, I don't want to get too deep in that before I let you know that we've got a couple of sales that we have extended as well as our new free app. Let me tell you about the free app first. Last night when I looked on the Apple store, I saw that we were trending as number five in the top 10 searches uh, on the Apple store. InfoWars was number five. That was about 8 p.m. Central Time last night. It's a great app. If you haven't seen it, it uh, does everything that our previous free app did, which was uh, basically just that, that app actually just plays the radio program predominantly. This will go through and show you articles. It'll show you special reports. It'll let you choose between a video and an audio feed of the show. So it's a great app. Take a look at it. You can find it at the Apple Store at the Android Play Store, and it is free. Now, if you want to support our operation, you want to support your health, at the same time, we have offered you some uh, uh, sales that are going to be expiring pretty soon, but we have now extended them for just a little while longer, another 24 hours uh, at, by listener request for Super Male Vitality, 20% off at InfoWarsLife.com. Also, our ultra-powerful Secret 12 formula, that's our B12 formulation, is now 20% off as well at InfoWarsLife.com, and that is for a limited time only. Take a look at those. Look at the other products that are there. There are hundreds of reviews for each of these products, people who have bought them and used them. See what other people say about this. Do your own investigation. Uh, things like vitamin B12 are very important for your health. And you can also see what is in Super Male Vitality. See what other people have said. And, of course, uh, Tim Kennedy has uh, talked about how that has been a game changer for him in his training as he's uh, coming up to the uh, mixed martial arts fight for, uh, I think it's, uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure what weight class it's in, but it's a championship fight, I believe, in Madison Square Gardens. He's a very serious trainer, and he said it made a huge difference in his training. Again, 20% off that and 20% off uh, Super 12, our vitamin B12 formulation. Let's talk about the situation today, the hearings about whether or not the IRS chief should be impeached. Now, the Hill says conservatives who back impeachment for the IRS commissioner, Koskinen, say that he hindered congressional investigations into whether the IRS unfairly scrutinized applications from conservative groups for tax-exempt status. Remember, Nixon was impeached because he tried to use the IRS to go after political enemies. Obama was not impeached when he used the IRS to go after a massive number of what he considered to be political enemies, the Tea Party. Okay, Now, they, in his defense, they say, well, Koskinen took the reins of the IRS several months after the 2013 controversy, Okay, but he blocked the investigation. That's the point. The previous IRS commissioner under Nixon turned Nixon in, and Nixon was impeached. That's the way it should be done. But now we have a government that has rotted from the head down. You've got an executive who rules like a third world dictator using the IRS against his political enemies and everybody from Obama down to the IRS commissioner down to the people who erased the tapes at the IRS they all seem to get a pass. Now there's another article on the Hill, a Republican, uh, Jim Jordan who is the House Freedom Caucus chairman is pushing for this hearing. He said today that impeaching the IRS commissioner is the least that Congress can do. He says all we're asking 
is that this guy no longer hold this office. And in light of the pattern of facts, I think that is the least we can do. Absolutely, it's the least they can do. But of course, you have these people in these bureaucracies that are permanently entrenched. We can never reduce the size of these regulatory agencies. The IRS was, I think, really the first example of what we've seen now, this pattern of tyranny that has multiplied every agency. Just like the IRS essentially wrote the rules, you know, they, the Congress said, we're going to create a taxing agency, we're going to have an income tax here, and we're going to let you write and enforce the rules as you see fit. Now we have the EPA doing it, we have all these different regulatory agencies doing it. They are writing the law. It's no longer legislation being done by our elected representatives. For the most part, they have just, they're just raising money for their next election from people that they're going to do political favors for. That's how corrupt Washington is. It's become this Byzantine corrupt uh, empire that's there. But these people are there forever. They are the legislators. Legislation without representation and taxation without representation. They decide how they're going to fine us. They come up with excessive fines. They say these are civil penalties, so you don't have any protection against excessive fines. And you don't have the assumption of innocence before found, being found guilty. And of course, when we look at what the IRS did, destroying evidence that we don't have it. You would be in jail just like the people who violate national security would be in jail if they did what Hillary Clinton did with the emails. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Wednesday, September 21st, 2016. I'm David Knight, and this is our final half hour of the show. I want to talk to you about how we clown around with terrorism. And I think nothing illustrates this better than two articles back to back. First of all, teens are charged with terroristic threats after creepy clown abduction posts on Facebook. This is a story from RT. They say four teenagers in Georgia have been charged with making quote-unquote, terroristic threats after allegedly posting Facebook messages threatening to abduct children while dressed as clowns. They say this is in the wake of a craze of creepy clown sightings. It's prompted police to establish uh, if any real threat exists among the hoaxes, okay? Now, this is very likely some immature teenagers who thinks, think it's really funny to dress up like clowns and scare people. This has been going around for quite a while. They make some statements on Facebook. And I don't know if they were serious or not. But if they were, it is not terrorism. First of all, they didn't do anything to anybody. This is some postings on Facebook. But they were charged now, arrested with terrorism. I mean, two 18-year-olds from Georgia, uh, a 17-year-old from Alabama, arrested, arrested for terroristic threats. Now, hold that in your mind. Oh, also a 16-year-old as well, okay, arrested for terroristic threats. Two 18s, one 17-year-old, and a 16-year-old arrested for terrorism because they get on Facebook and talk about how they're going to abduct people dressed as clowns. Probably a joke. Meanwhile, here's the joke that the government plays on us. The guy who really is a terrorist in New York, who really did put bombs out and blew one up, okay, is not charged with terrorism. Not charged with terrorism. They charged him with bombing today. They charged him with property destruction. He, he blew up a, um, a dumpster. <laughs> and the use of weapons of mass destruction, but not with terrorism or material support as was expected. You see? The FBI can't even say Islamic terrorism. Forget about the fact that Obama and Hillary can't put those two words together. Islamic terrorism. The FBI won't even do it. And it's amazing because this is precisely what we saw Comey did with Hillary Clinton, lays out the felonies that she committed, the multiple felonies that she committed, and then comes out and says, but it'd be crazy to charge her that way. So I guess if you got somebody that plants bombs around the city and explodes one of them, then uh, it would be crazy to charge him with terrorism, especially when he considers himself to be an Islamic terrorist. They point out, even in The Guardian, they say, the charges that were filed in federal court suggest the investigators were unable to connect Rahami to a terrorist group, though the documents quote a journal on his person referring to jihad and to prominent jihadi figures. He was an Islamic terrorist, folks. They know it. They find the <laughs> he's got literally a, a smoking bomb and the journal that talks about jihad, but they won't call it terrorism. And I think this is interesting. Because, again, this is the wiggle room that we saw with Comey in terms of letting Hillary Clinton off. 
And Comey, as I've pointed out before, has a very, very long history, just as Loretta Lynch does with the Clinton crime family. They let Sandy Berger off. The two of them were looking at Sandy Berger when he went into the National Archives as the 9-11 Commission was looking into what the Clintons knew about terrorism in the wake of uh, the 9-11 investigation. There was some stuff there. We don't know what it was. They didn't want anybody to see it. So they sent in Sandy Berger, who had been uh, part of their national security team. I think he was head of it. He goes in and gets the documents, stuffs them in his clothes walks out and then destroys those documents and nothing happened to him. And the people who were running the prosecution on that one were the same people that didn't run the prosecution on Hillary Clinton either. And so when we look at this, I, I'm just absolutely stunned to see this. And yet they say, like, like he gave her the, the wiggle room to say, well, there wasn't any intention of criminal uh, action on Hillary's part when uh, they deliberately erased all these emails, as we see now with the uh, information coming out of Reddit, with her IT guy who uh, continually took the Fifth Amendment, but he was on uh, Reddit asking people for, for help in terms of erasing uh, traces of anything that he had done for a VIP uh, person. And as we know that they used... Uh, <laughs> Uh, bleach bit, which is not just erasing the information, but completely eradicating uh, any chance of recovery. It's a hardcore cover up, you know, kind of like taking a hammer and smashing your device, that type of stuff, which we also found out about them. But in the same way that the FBI covered for Hillary Clinton and said, well, there wasn't any intention in this when there really was. And we know that now they come in and they say, well, he wasn't connected to a terrorist group. Come on, these are the people who tell us after every single terrorist attack that it was a lone wolf terrorist. And yet, this guy is not going to be charged with terrorism because he wasn't connected to a group. Really? Really? You serious? He thinks he's part of a group. He thinks he's part of ISIS. ISIS thinks he's part of ISIS. We think he's... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, you know, it is suspicious. Even the Guardian says, why would he put the bomb in a dumpster? That's something to think about. Because at the time these bombings were going off, folks, uh, just before it happened, we had a massive bombing that was being done by Obama. And I talked about this uh, Monday night. I talked about it in depth. and I'm not going to go in that much detail. I said, uh, Obama, the mad bomber of Syria. We had an article on Monday from Syrian Girl, how the U.S. became ISIS's Air Force. Remember, we had people saying back in 2013, look, we don't want to get involved in the Syrian war. We don't want to be al-Qaeda's Air Force, which is what they all knew. The U.S. government wanted to do. Well, that's exactly what we did this last weekend. There was a uh, military base in Syria that was protecting a city that was there. And they had amassed a lot of troops. They had amassed a thousand elite Syrian commandos at this long-term military, Syrian army military base. It had been a military base for the Syrian army for a long time. As they amassed a thousand elite Syrian commandos there, the U.S. Air Force began striking that base and killed uh, 80 Syrian soldiers, wounded 100. That's what the Romans would call decimation, killing one out of 10, okay, which they, I guess, if you look at the uh, total casualties there, uh, dead and wounded, it's uh, even, it's almost 20% that they got out of that force. So what has happened now? ISIS has now taken control of that base because we operated and did that for them. And that attack went on for 20 minutes until Russia contacted the U.N. as well as the U.S. and said, hey, you violated the ceasefire. Uh, you need to stop this. Now that city that the army base was protecting, a city of 200,000, is now under threat of an ISIS invasion. That happened over the weekend. You didn't hear anything about that, did you? That happened a little bit before these bombings in New York where uh, the bomb was put inside a dumpster. But to follow up on that, we had a U.S. coalition that was delivering aid to Syrian refugees inside Syria uh, that was attacked. Now, they say that there was no air force in the area except for Russian and Syrian planes. Syria, uh, Russia has come back and said, and this is from Reuters, uh, Russia says U.S. drone was in an area where a U.N. convoy was struck in Syria. So they say, uh, yeah, it wasn't a plane, it was a drone attack. The Russian spokesman said that Western allegations that Moscow was responsible were an attempt to distract attention from the U.S.-led coalition's bombing of Syrian soldiers that I just told you about Saturday uh, in uh, Syria. 
And they were very specific about it. They said on the evening of September 19th in that specific region, a drone belonging to the International Coalition had taken off from the Ingerlik Air Base in Turkey, was flying at a height of 3,600 meters and traveling about 200 kilometers per hour. So the Russians are saying uh, it wasn't our planes, it was a drone attack. Nevertheless, this is what is going on in Syria. When we talk about the humanitarian crisis, you have to understand that in the past we have always given aid. The United States has given more aid than anybody else. We've taken more refugees than anybody else has in this particular situation as well. Unfortunately, most of the time when we give aid, it gets stolen by the kleptocrats that run the country. But we can still, if we are careful, we can still aid people in that country. In this particular case, this case is different from many of the refugee cases that we've seen in the sense that we are the ones who started this war and who continue this war, as we just saw this last weekend, being the Air Force for Al-Qaeda. Now, this ceasefire apparently has uh, fallen to pieces, and they're going to use that as an excuse to bring more people into this country from Syria and from other Islamic countries. People who have seen their country destroyed by what they believe are American bombs, American drones, and case after case. And I want to look at uh, what happened on uh, Morning Joe with Hillary's campaign manager. Uh, they... She, this is uh, Robbie Mook, and he goes on to the Morning Joe show, uh, Joe Scarborough, and um, they ask, what is the plan to deal with ISIS? And so she doesn't have a plan. Because, again, they started this. They started it going all the way back to Libya. But we've seen time and again the U.S. training, transporting troops there, training the troops, equipping the troops, and now acting as their air force. They want to keep this going. They want the chaos because that is the excuse for the Islamification of the U.S. Now, Mook says, well, in contrast to Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, this is Hillary Clinton's campaign manager on the show, has released a clear and decisive plan to defeat ISIS. And they called his bluff on it. <laughs> they pressed him further for specifics about Clinton's thoughts on Syria. And he repeatedly dodged and referred questions to Clinton herself. He says, again, I think you're going to have to ask her that question. Well, if she had a clear and decisive plan, don't you think that her campaign manager would be able to explain that? You know, if somebody asked me what Donald Trump's health care plan was, I could tell you very specifically what it is. I've looked at it. I'm not his campaign manager. Uh, I'm, just, I'm a voter, okay? I want to know what these people say they're going to do about particular issues. So here's her campaign manager keeps putting out these talking points that she has a clear, decisive plan to defeat ISIS and Trump doesn't, and yet... He cannot provide any details, and he continually says, no, I can't tell you. You'd have to talk to her about that, okay? <laughs> At which point, even Joe Scarborough, the people, these people love Hillary Clinton. They hate Donald Trump, and Joe Scarborough says, we love you, buddy, but why are you here? What are you here for? If you can't explain her clear, decisive plan, even though we love you and we love Hillary, why are you here, okay? And <laughs> they go on and then actually make the comparison, the obvious comparison to the Aleppo moment that Gary Johnson had. Scarborough likened it uh, to the Aleppo moment, and he says, well, you've been saying that Donald Trump won't tell us what the policy is here, but you're not telling us what the policy is. That's uh, co-anchor uh, Willie Geist. So we see yet again uh, the emptiness of the Hillary Clinton campaign. And I think nothing illustrates this better than the things that they've chosen to focus on. As I pointed out earlier in the show, I want to talk about uh, Skittles today. Because that's what Hillary Clinton wants to talk about. You know, last week it was all about Pepe the Frog. Look, they tweeted out this uh, uh, meme that had Donald Trump and Pepe the Frog and uh, Alex Jones, and, and that was just horrible. See, they are really deplorable. You know, Pepe the Frog and Alex Jones, I mean, that's, that's just awful. And, and Donald Trump Jr. was on there, and he retweeted that, and so did uh, Trump's other son, Eric, and so forth. Well, after talking about Pepe the Frog last week, now this week it's all about Skittles. Why are they talking about it? Well, if you haven't seen this little tempest in a teapot that the Democrats create, and why do they do this? Why do they focus on Skittles and cartoon characters week after week? It's because they have nothing to talk about, just like they don't have a plan for Syria. They don't have a plan to stop ISIS. They want to keep that going. And she doesn't have a plan for anything. She has absolutely no accomplishments. If you want to believe 
that she didn't deliberately set the Middle East on fire, if you want to believe that she didn't deliberately go in and take out Muammar Gaddafi uh, and, and brag about it, then she is incredibly incompetent. But she's a liar and a criminal. I, I tend to believe that she did it on purpose, okay? But when we look at the refugee situation, the tweet that was put out by Donald Trump, Trump Jr. was one that's been around for a while. He just retweeted this meme about immigration. You can see it right there on the screen. You know, if I had a bowl of Skittles and I told you that three of these, bowl, three of these Skittles would kill you, would you take a handful? He says, that's our Syrian refugee problem. And they went ballistic. That's all the left can talk about now is the Skittle thing. We've got the Hill saying that today, Luis Guterres, a Democrat congressman from Illinois, big open border guy, brought in a bag of Skittles to a House hearing today. He ate the Skittles as he mocked Donald Trump. And he said, I really love Skittles because, as you see, they come in orange and yellow and red and purple, all the different colors. They all come together in a bag, kind of like a rainbow. Isn't that wonderful? The diversity of Skittles. And he goes, every now and then I get a bad Skittle, but I don't ban them all because I get one. I mean, which I would say, well, you know, by bad Skittle, is that a Skittle that, uh, that killed you? <laughs> a, a Skittle that uh, would kill your family, like an explosive kill, Skittle or something like that? Uh, that's, he, he's missing the point completely. And yet, we also have NPR jumps in on it, too. This is the, the banality uh, and the triviality, uh, the way these people come after him. It's, it's just so incredibly petty. NPR says, Trump Jr.'s Skittles photo was taken by a former refugee, and it was used without his permission. Well, there's such a thing as fair use, and that applies to parody. It applies to uh, political speech. And what it shows, of course, is that their first instinct is to censor people. Take that down. I don't want you putting that up there. That was a photograph I took of a bowl of Skittles. High artwork there. <laughs> I mean, who can take a picture of a bowl of Skittles? Anyway, that's his picture. He doesn't want it used. But you know what? He can't really do anything about it because it's fair use. As I said before, parody, uh, political speech, uh, we don't let you uh, copyright that type of stuff. But here's the key one, I think. And this is from The Hill. Stuart Shapiro, who is a contributing editor, he said the Skittles tweet shows what Trump Jr. doesn't get about the refugee risk. Actually, this editorial shows what the left doesn't get about the refugee problem and what it's doing to our country. Okay, so he says, putting aside the offensive nature of comparing human beings to poison candy and the possible Nazi origins of the meme, always going back to calling people Nazis if you don't agree with them. Two, two tactics, three tactics, okay? Call people Nazis, uh, censor them, call them racist, call them deplorable, okay? But he says, while we have no way of reliably estimating what percentage of any group of individuals would possibly attempt a terrorist attack, it is clearly much lower than 1%. Think about that. He says, we don't have any way to reliably estimate it, but it's got to be lower than 1%. Really? Well, then, if you have no way of reliably estimating this, then what you just said about it being less than 1% is just total nonsense. Shapiro. What's his name? Yeah, Stuart Shapiro. Stuart Shapiro. Your sentence is totally illogical, okay? Take the German uh, estimate, for example, okay? They thought it's less than 1%. They said, we let in 500,000 people, and folks, we think 500 of them might be violent jihadis. That's one-tenth of 1%. That's one in a 1,000. Is that the chance that we should take? Who decides that we should take that chance? I wasn't asked. Our elected representatives weren't asked. You are going to be asked on this election, November 8th. You're going to be asked if you want to take that one in a thousand, or maybe it's one in 100 chance. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. In this last section here, I want to talk about the reality behind the Skittle Bowl meme. But before we do, real quickly, I want to remind you that we have a new InfoWars app. Of course, we had an app before where you could listen to the radio program. You can still do that, but you can also now watch in HD. You can also get the latest news and headlines free of the distortion of mainstream media. And, of course, uh, the app is doing very well. You can find it at uh, Apple's App Store, Android Play Store, or you can go to Infowars.com forward slash app. Now, that is absolutely free. And for our listeners, we have also extended a couple of our sales. We've extended for 24 hours by listener request, Super Male Vitality for 20% off. You can find that at InfoWarsLife.com. Also, 
Our ultra-powerful Secret 12 formulation, that's our vitamin B12 formula in liquid format. You can get that now 20% off at InfoWarsLife.com, and that is also for a limited time. So uh, those two specials, we have 20% off Super Male Vitality and 20% off Secret 12, our B12 formulation. You can find at InfoWarsLife.com. We thank you for supporting us. That's why we offer these sales, and that's what keeps our operation going. That's how we fund our operation. That's how we give you things like the free app and the free content. Now, going back to this article that I was just talking about, he goes on in this editorial condemning Donald Trump Jr. for using this analogy. If you've got a bowl of Skittles and I tell you that three of them are going to kill you, would you just take a handful and start eating them? Okay, That comes down to the essence of, do we know who is coming into this country? And quite frankly, we saw the State Department admit that they don't know. Washington Examiner says uh, Islamic State terrorists are trying to pose as refugees, admits the State Department, okay? The State Department says, well, and this was on Fox and Friends, I wouldn't debate the fact that there's a potential for IRS, uh, for IRS, for ISIS terrorists to try to insert themselves. We'll see that in some of the refugee camps in Jordan, and we also see it in Turkey, where they try to insert themselves into the population. But he says, well, the vetting process, yeah, it's, it's not perfect, but it's very, very stringent. It could take up to two years for a single refugee to make it into the country. And I would call total BS on that. Look, folks, they don't have to go through that. They can come through the open borders. That's just for the people that they fly in, if that is even true. How do they vet these people? What is this stringent process based on? What do they know about these people in these countries, in these war-torn countries? Do they even know what country they come from? Do they know what their political background is? I don't believe they do. Neither does the Texas governor. Governor Abbott today, as Alex uh, pointed out earlier in the broadcast, has said that uh, we're not going to take any more refugees if we don't get some indication that security demands are being met. They say the Obama administration has announced a new goal of resettling 110,000 refugees in the U.S. in the coming year, including an unspecified increase in the number from Syria. Texas said that unless Washington unconditionally approves the state's new plan to control placements in Texas by September 30th, the agency will exit the program. We would not be the first state to do this. They say Texas would join Kansas and New Jersey in withdrawing state participation in the refugee program over the federal government's vetting procedures to screen out potential terrorists. Governor Abbott said the letter was sent in response to the Office of Refugee Resettlement's unwillingness to approve the state's new refugee plan, which would require national security officials to ensure that the refugees do not pose a security threat to Texas. Governor Abbott said empathy must be balanced with security. You understand that? They just say, hey, go ahead, swallow this. We're not going to tell you what's in it. It's a perfect analogy. That's why they hate the Skittles analogy so much. One last thing that the guy said, he said, hey, the conservatives are getting real upset about this, but they don't really care about global warming. Let me tell you something. Global warming hasn't killed anybody, okay? We haven't had any attacks from global warming. You can't even prove global warming. Look at what happened when Hillary passed out. Nobody could even agree what the temperature was in New York City. That's the nonsense that climate change is based upon. Join us tonight for the InfoWars Nightly News, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.